Well, are we are we here? Are yes, we alive? We're, we're here. We're alive. We are alive and here. Mm. I would say. Draco Kraken says boo. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Um. Oh well. boy, that is not loading for me for whatever reason. Oh, watch Come again. Yeah. yeah. Happens sometimes. Well, hello out there, and welcome back to there we go. Table Talk Discussion and Discourse. I, as always, am your host, Alejo, a.k.a. Radon95. And I have been very bad about being here lately, but I'm here now. But you're here now. That's yeah. all that matters. Yes. So welcome. And uh, Aiden, was he doing schoolwork or work work? I don't uh, know. He had some stuff he had to take care of. Yeah. Um, so he will not be joining us tonight, unfortunately. Uh, um, yeah. But uh, that's okay. Mm. So, topic today, world building. Yes. But mistakes. Mm. Um, yeah, apparently uh, there are some common ones in just in general <laughs> mistakes and i'm uh wondering what they are really um yeah. i can't really think i guess the only thing that i can think of being a mistake is just like inconsistencies and yeah, impossibilities yeah those and also i would say just like i don't know having uh, a a scope that it, it, like you lose it every now and again in the sense of like mm. it being so grandiose that you could probably lose yourself in like everything um yeah and maybe stress yourself out super hard yeah um but other than that i don't, I don't really and like anything there can work. be like dm specific ones where it's like oh man i made this thing they're gonna think it's awesome and then the players don't care and then the dm is like well shit i put all you know that right. kind of thing yeah yeah but that's just a whole case of just like well sometimes yeah. they just won't and that's fine yeah. you know um so yeah ah, jesus <laughs> uh so let's get to it mm. uh so the first video we are covering is genie d mm. uh five world building mistakes dms make D &D only advice. five only f well there are five more um because she made a follow-up video oh, that is okay. five more or something um okay but we'll see if uh we go through this quick um yeah. and get to that one because i have a different one on the docket for another one um yeah. and perhaps <laughs> uh we can v revisit and go to that second one as well mm. i don't know so uh well that's not neat all, all this doesn't need to be there sorry hold on let me let me i've spoiled the comment oh boy uh and a bunch of things that's look at me. what you did look at me i'm mr me seeks look at me um i forgot that existed <laughs> that's fair <laughs> with the aroma of bourbon and refreshing hiss pop of a can of coke zero steely makes his appearance evening gents. Oh, shit. hello steely hello hello how you been um so don't mind here me here we go i'm pouring pills into other pills yeah you're fine <laughs> so let's see what Ginny has for us today yes it started to look like a lisa frank illustration which to be clear is fantastic i don't know who that is i don't yeah i don't know what that is Hello friends, Ginny D here, and today we are going to talk world building in tabletop games, specifically D&D, but a lot of these tips will probably apply to other systems too. Whether you're homebrewing an entire world from scratch or just building on an existing one, world building is a huge undertaking. I mean, even the name mm. sounds intimidating. Just build a world. Yeah, a whole world. It's fine. Just be a god. What's the problem? There are people who are like the Tolkens of the world who just take to world building really naturally, 
but room. not everybody is like, hey, I'm gonna invent a speakable language or two. Some people need a little more guidance. So today we are gonna go over some common mistakes that DMs make in the world building process and talk about how to correct them. By fixing these cool. problems, you can make your world easier to DM in and more fun for your players to explore. This turned out to be a big topic, so I'm gonna split it into two halves. We will tackle five mistakes this week and another five next week. So oh. if you're not already subscribed, okay. this is a great time to do that so you don't miss the other 50% of this information. Yeah, oh, enough. by okay. the way, pre-orders are now over for my D&D inspired pinup calendar, Natural 22, but don't panic, the calendar is still available. This just means that it is while supplies last, so it could sell out any time now, usually sometime in December. They're limited editions, so once they're gone, they are gone forever. This also means that digital items are now available, including digital calendars and the PDF version of my one-shot adventure for fifth edition, Bard Behind Bars. Get it all? I don't know when this video was posted. Um, let me find out yeah. because this is probably like super over at this point. Yeah. Um, let me see. NED uh, YouTube. Yeah, that's the one. Um, this was two months ago. So yeah, it's probably over at this point. Sorry. <laughs> yep. Oh, well. At GinnyD.com slash calendar. I promise all 10 of these tips aren't going to be this basic, but I do feel like it has to be said, you should read the DM's guide. I don't mean to blow your mind here, but it actually has a lot of useful guidance for creating your world. If you're building out a settlement like a city or a village, the DMG has six full pages that walk you through determining everything from the settlement's size and atmosphere to government and currency. If you need some jumping off points or want to generate a few settlements quickly, there are rolling tables to lay out the basics. Fully a quarter of the book is dedicated to creating your world. And if you're skipping it as a baseline source of information, you are doing yourself a disservice. There's so much information available online that's either derivative of the information in the DMG or assumes that you already have that information as a foundation. I think the prevalence of easily digestible bite-sized DM advice online makes it weirdly easy to sleep on the basics. If you haven't done it yet, or if you haven't done it in a while, I would highly recommend just taking some time to crack open your DMG and make sure that you're familiar with it. You don't have to follow it all, and I'm definitely not saying that you can't or shouldn't build on it with other resources. Like, six pages for settlements is great, but Nord Games' Spectacular Settlements book is going to give you a lot more information if you really want to dig deeper into that portion of world building. Think of the DMG as the foundation, and you can build on it however you choose. But if you start building without a foundation, you might run into problems later that could have easily been avoided. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Wanted to go through the whole tip first, and it took mm -hmm. a little longer than I thought it would, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, DMG is a good resource. Yes, yes it's a good starting point. Um, it is she's talking about good. fifth specifically, I will say. Yes, yes. Um, it is definitely a good resource to look into if you want to start DMing. Yes, I was going to say that, absolutely. If you are yeah. a very brand new Yes. Um, out of the box DM, yes. uh, yeah, it, it'll it'll help you a lot. Um, mm. And then know... once you've played a few games, honestly, a lot of it, aside from the really really fantastical and weird stuff, which yeah. just comes from your imagination, yeah. you'll kind of get a sense for how things usually work. Absolutely. Like after playing for a while. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. And yeah. and there's no shame, of course, in in having to um, fall back on it for a crutch every now and again because you can't not. really think of like, you know, how you want this specific city to be or like this this thing over here and all that. Um, yeah. it, it's very good for generating those ideas if you really need you know that push. Yeah. Um, because it has all that stuff right there. Mm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Um, good tip. Yeah. It's no secret that I am an organization nerd, I love a good spreadsheet, and I would marry Google Drive if it were legal in the state of Colorado. But no matter if you're the Evernote type, or the paper journal type, or something else entirely, you, you absolutely must have a Sorry. system yeah, I think she to is. log yeah. and organize your world building information. Without a system, you'll end up doing a lot more work for a lot less benefit. You'll prep something and then lose track of it and have to do it all over again. You'll mm. do some great world building and then not be able to find it when you actually need it. Or you'll work something out 
set it aside, forget about it, and then later end up contradicting yourself. It sucks mm. a lot when a player asks you a question that you know you have an answer to, but just can't find. Different systems work for different people, so I'm not gonna tell you how to do it, but I will say it's better to just pick something and start with it than to avoid putting a system yes. into place until you find the perfect one. You'll undoubtedly change your mind and learn what kinds of tools you need over time, and that is okay. Maybe you'll start off sketching out your ideas on paper and then realize that you want something more searchable, at which point you can make the transition to a digital option. But a transition like that will be way easier if all of your notes and ideas are already in one place. Speaking of systems, this feels like as good a time as any to introduce you to today's sponsor. Okay. No. Well, so before that. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, th to me, this doesn't, this is definitely a mistake that you can make, but to me personally, mm -hmm. it feels like something that would never, ever happen because mm -hmm. if I'm building a world, I'm writing it down. Yeah. You uh, know well, what I mean? So, and I think the, the important thing is to like have some sort of organization that you're writing it down in usually yeah. because uh, for me, um, I still have my, my notebook for the, the world that I ran you guys through, um, for Age of Magic Fur. I have mm -hmm. um, Agris still just somewhere. I think it's downstairs, actually, um, on a mm -hmm. shelf. But um, yeah. it's, like, I have sticky notes <laughs> all okay. over the fucking place so that I can I go to places in that in that notebook. Um, mm -hmm. ah, in order to, yeah, in order to find, because I wrote, like, this is specifically, oh, this is this town. Oh, this yes. is this, you know? Because that mm -hmm. helped me a lot with, after the fact of, like, I wrote... All of this on this page and this page, and then I kept going to another thing on the next few pages, right? Like, I didn't yeah. give myself any room or anything like that, so the sticky notes helped a lot. Um, uh -huh. But, yeah. And, yeah, like, if you're... It, it's, um, it's different for me, because yeah. I've never really... I have run an in-person campaign once. It was a long time yep. ago. And we... Uh, what I did was, whenever I had a like a folder or a book or anything that had information we would put uh paper clips on the pages yeah okay so you just put the paper clip on there and it's like okay this is an important page and f because i have an advantage in that i always run online shit so all of my writing stuff all of my tabletop rpg stuff is literally in a folder called tt rpg stuff yeah on my desktop yeah so oh, yeah if it's for call of cthulhu it's in it's in multiple files inside that folder like right everything right. is organized D D, seventh c call of cthulhu delta green everything yeah exactly. it all has its own folder yeah um i i have a bunch of things in different folders too that are in like either a D&D &D folder or a specific, like whatever the system is, right? I yeah. have my system for Delta Green. Um, mm -hmm. That whole folder is there with all the stuff that I need there. Um, mm -hmm. And then I have like the like campaign like folder itself as well. Yes. I, I have subfolders for that. Usually mm -hmm. I don't do a lot of um, online like writing. I, I like to write it. Well, that's not true. Nowadays, I do it more, but I used to do it a lot more in a notebook because I don't know if having the notebook right there in my hands felt better um, mm. to me to like flip through and get to. Um, it enough. probably takes a lot longer, but I don't know. It just felt better uh, to me. I prefer to write in a Word document specifically because my handwriting is too big. Fair enough. Yep. Uh, it's too big. It's too messy. And uh, if I'm writing it with a text document, I can be sure that I'm getting the maximum amount of words mm -hmm. on the paper that I need. That's fair. And it's all a, it's a perfectly symmetrical font. I have no trouble reading right. it and be like, yeah. what the hell did I write here? You know, yeah. that, that makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the downside is going to be when I do choose to run a um, an in-person campaign mm -hmm. because I can't really lug my desktop everywhere. So yeah. I, I'd have to print it either out. E yeah, I'd have to print it out and stuff like that and have my physical notes. And then I'm not used to having physical notes. So, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but yeah, this is it is definitely a mistake to be disorganized. Yes. Um, I guess I hadn't really ever thought of it as one just because I am organized by default. Right, exactly. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. definitely not as organized in general, but mm. for something like this, I tend to stay more organized. Yeah. Um, because it's very important that you remember all this shit. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And even, like, 
<laughs> I I have my notes that I, you know, look through every now and again and I go, ah, but they're there, you know, I'll have to look through them, yeah. but they're there. Mm-hmm. Um uh, uh, one resource that might help with world building is to check out some epic fantasy fiction other than Tolkien. Uh, yes. I love and recommend Tolkien, but his stuff is so influential that it is familiar. Yes. Uh, stuff like Brandon Sanderson, Mistborn Stormlight Archives, and Robert Jordan, Wheel of Time, uh, shows some de- deep creative world building to inspire you. Not to copy mm. from them, but to be inspired to break free of common tropes. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Create yeah. like your your ideas and stuff can come from anywhere. Well, yes. I think we've talked about that before. Yeah. Um, like don't just make it Tolkien. Right, yeah. It's a it's a good place to start, yeah. but branch out. Absolutely. And like you can get um a different feel from a different genre, even like you you're doing a fantasy setting, but you then like read something sci fi and then you're like, Oh, that's pretty cool. I can kind of fantasize yeah. that. You know? Mm-hmm. Um which <laughs> I think, in hindsight, sci-fi is sci- science fantasy. So <laughs> I've used a pretty uh, already easy to fantasy up a, a thing that's kind of fantasy anyway, or sci- science yeah. fiction, excuse me. But whatever, mm. whatever. Anyway, yeah. Um. Uh, if I'm building a world, I'm writing it down. Yeah, me too. Haha, <laughs> I would never keep it all in my head. Haha, <laughs> glances around nervously. Yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, that's fair. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, I, I've become more, um, improv, I think, and more, like, keeping things in my head, um, mm. these, these days. Um, it's just... Yeah, see... Sorry. No, you, you're good. Going. I, I was just gonna say, it's just, it's just one of those things that I think has developed for me over time um because i used to write everything down (laughs) yeah see when i when i said if i'm building a world i'm writing it down it's not so much that i'm writing down dialogue and story beats and stuff like that it is specifically world elements because i'm the kind of person who will have an idea and then forget to write it down and fucking forget it oh yeah and i will be like uh two months down the line i'm like fuck i had a really good idea what the hell was it you know yeah yeah, and so I can't I not to mention when I try to make my world I try to make it a little bit off the wall mm. while maintaining some familiar fantasy stuff. Right. So I have to remember those really creative weird things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise they fall through the cracks of just generic fantasy. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Cuz like one of the cities in my world is called uh, High Peak Harbor, mm-hmm. and um, the city is nothing really all that special. It's a city. Yeah. It's a harbor. It's a port city on a uh, large rock peninsula, but the interesting thing about it is how it was actually constructed because they had a – there's like a massive rock peninsula, mm-hmm. and the town was built by mining that rock peninsula down to sea level. Oh. And that's where they put the lighthouse. Oh, cool. And so they took the whole peninsula, or at least a portion of the whole peninsula, and dug down. It was like 500 feet yeah, of yeah. like solid stone that they just dug away and removed and used to build the rest of the town. That's cool. Because it was a quarry right there, so may yeah, as well. Yeah, as well, yeah. And you make a, a massive natural dock out of it. Yeah. So, but in... In time, I would have forgotten about that and be like, oh, okay, they just put that shit there, you know? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Um, so, uh, my handwriting was never good, but the age of typing everything just sent it careening into grade schooler range. <laughs> Don't worry, Steely, mm. that's fair enough. I can definitely still write, but again, too messy. Yeah, I, I can still write, it's just, um, it depends on what my mood is, like how I write. Mm. Right, because yeah. in um in my frantic, I need to write this down. It's one a.m. and I can't sleep, and I've been struck with creativity. Uh, yes, it's a lot less legible. Yeah, <laughs> but it it needs to be written down, otherwise I will forget. Now you know what I do in those mm. situations. I don't write it down physically. I text it to myself. Mm, that's that's how idea. I. That is how I take notes when I'm like away from my computer. Yeah, I just yeah. text myself. Fair enough. 
Uh, the, the Lux says the biggest world building mistake you can make is to make a world where laptops can take 15 minutes to load YouTube. Yikes. Mm, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Damn it, God. Well, well you're here now. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, right. This is a sponsor. Yeah, sponsor. Uh, oh, Jesus. Ooh, it's a skit, probably. Yeah, it's yeah, a skit. It's a skit. I appreciate it. I gl I'm glad you were sponsored by whatever. World uh, Anvil, like everybody else. Yeah, like everybody. Starting smell. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, I know that oh, I just small. recommended no. the DMs guide, and it literally begins the creating a campaign section with the subhead start small. So it's more than a little presumptuous for me to name that exact thing as a mistake. And to be clear, you absolutely want to know about the specific area and specific events that your players are starting off with. You should mm. definitely have a strong handle on their immediate going, surroundings before the game begins. But I think especially for folks who are stepping outside of the core D&D world, the start small approach can sometimes leave you with a world that's lacking the deep, fundamental features that make it feel cohesive and real. Starting with the big okay. picture can make the small picture come into focus more yes. easily. For example, let's say that in your world, dragons are attracted to the scent of magic, and they feed on spellcasters to build their own power. This one large-scale world-building choice will trickle down in a million different day-to-day -day ways. For example, yes. any magical institution needs to be heavily dragon-proofed. Magic yeah. users might not even be permitted to live in close proximity to metropolitan areas just due to the risk. Maybe spellcasters have developed charms or spells that will disguise the scent of magic. Casters who want to travel will need powerful escorts. Wouldn't that... That might mean tons of... <laughs> Never mind. Hmm. Wouldn't the charm that disguises the smell of magic be magical and smell like magic? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but it's the yeah. good kind of smell that they don't yeah. care about. Yeah, right? And I mean, like, even if it's like, oh, man, it smells like nothing, then that means... Oh, I smell nothing. Literally nothing. That means it's yeah. a charm protecting, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, unless um, your dragons are more like animals. Yeah, exactly, right. Sorry. It, it really depends. <laughs> no, you're and you're right to take a take a moment. Um yeah. but um overall like I like this is fine to do, but this is very much a de it depends situation on how yeah. whoever it is is creating the world because some people aren't going to benefit from this and some people are. It's just yeah. So far. Um and I know that oh, I'm one of the ones that does because whenever I'm writing an actual story, I start with the end yeah. and work my way back. Yeah, So exactly. that's very reminiscent of starting with a big thing and then seeing how it affects the small things. Yeah, yeah. Is willing to work as bodyguards, or it might mean that there are regular caravans that travel common routes with a huge armed guard. Perhaps you have arcane scouts who travel from town to town with a caged pseudo dragon, sniffing for children who are starting to display inherent arcane power, oh. so they can take those children away. And then, from if it's a dark fantasy, they execute them. For yeah. Maybe your big bad has allied with a dragon and is kidnapping spellcasters to feed it, slowly building its power. That's just a few minutes of spitballing, but imagine how much more interesting that starter town is going to be now that you have a ready source of work for mm -hmm. your adventurers, baked in conflict between groups, motivations that will inform all kinds of NPCs, and quest hooks for both small and large plots. Now when you create that starter city, you have so many potential starting points for it, and your world is going to feel truly complex and unique from the very first session. Maybe your players start in a heavily guarded refuge for spellcasters. Maybe they start in a city that was recently terrorized by a dragon hunting a powerful wizard. This can really help give your starting location some flavor that immediately hooks your players into the things that make your world special. Yeah, I mean, oh, again, if you benefit from doing big picture first, absolutely. But if you also benefit from doing the small stuff first and then working up to the bigger picture, like, that's also fine. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, it's, it's weird to call it a mistake um, at all. When it's just a different style of Yeah, it world really building. is more a style. Yeah, not, exactly. Yeah, not a it's not a negative at all. Yeah, exactly. Like I I could imagine and I don't I don't know of anyone, but I'm sure there's many people out there who have started at the first starting town and thought, All right, what does this town do? And then they've built from there. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Or even if you start from a a big capital, right? Like a big yeah. capital is still small in the grand scheme. Like, how oh, yeah. does the big capital then affect the other towns around it? And then you start going from there, and then you get into the bigger 
bigger thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, anyway, strange, but okay. <laughs> we all have heroes when it comes to fantasy worlds. The authors of our favorite books, directors of our favorite movies, and even other DMs that we look up to. But while I think it's great to have good influences, it's also super important what to is figure this music? out what parts of <laughs> world know. building you Oh, yeah, Lux says, uh, you just have to do it the right way to avoid creating plot holes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. as long as long as you remain consistent, right? I mean, yes. the, the key word for any yep. world building is consistency. Yes. Um, as long as you're doing that, you should be totally fine. Yeah. Um, just check yourself, you know? Yeah. You like, instead of just trying to mimic someone else's style. For example, Matt Mercer clearly loves political intrigue. Watching him DM, yes, observing his world, really you can cool. tell that he is seriously passionate about developing these sprawling continents with tons of history and culture. When I started my own homebrew campaign, I wanted to capture some of the magic that I was seeing on screen in Critical Role. As a result, so I tried everybody. to create a world the way that Matt Mercer creates uh. a world. And y'all, turns out I do not love that. I do not even like that. Yes. I realized Fair now enough. that what That's, I wanted to match yeah. was Critical Role's depth, commitment, and emotionality, not the actual flavor of the world. If I were to launch another homebrew campaign right now, I would pick something that I felt genuinely excited to create, like a Feywild setting with fairy courts, or a Hell magic yeah. school setting, or something that echoes yeah. the feeling of old folklore. I'd pick something yeah. that I can envision in my head and feel excited about. Along those same lines, I would pick a scale that I feel more comfortable with. Remember your world doesn't have to be a literal world. Your whole campaign could take place on one continent, mm -hmm. in one kingdom, or even in one city. Yes. If you feel overwhelmed by the thought of inventing an entire world from scratch, then don't do that. You can always scale a small world up if that ends up feeling right. You're allowed to communicate with your players above table about the limits. You don't the have hell to you let are. them buy Pause it. Ship. That's a mistake. <laughs> How dare you communicate? <laughs> You're not allowed to talk to them. No. Yeah, that's right. They're your enemy. God. Yeah. I mean, they're on this other side of the table and they're killing your dudes. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, God, no, that's uh, such a good point. A hundred percent. I'm I'm a hundred percent behind this. And Lux, yeah, I, I you, he's they said um I never watched Critical Role, which fair enough. Like what I meant is those who did. Um, very much fell in love with that, and a lot of them who did start because of them wanted to do it like Matt. Like, yes. that's just a given. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. A, a lot of people wanted to be like Matt, and yeah. just like with what Ginny said, after you try to be like Matt, if you're not into it, it's not gonna yeah. be fun. <laughs> because you're not Matt. Yeah, it doesn't well, matter who well, you are. Unless you're Matt, you're not well, Matt. Well, what I, what I mean by that is, like, the political intrigue side. Like, if you're oh, not yeah, into yeah, yeah. political intrigue, you're not gonna yes. find it fun to make that. Yes, right? yes, absolutely. Um, like, the thing is, you can absolutely like a genre without yeah. having any idea of how to create your own. Yes. 100%. I like fantasy films, but fuck, I have no idea how to make one. I yeah. like video games, but fuck, I, I'm not a programmer. I just like to play them. Yeah, exactly. You know? Like, I know what I like, and I can tell you how this game feels and, like, the flaws that I can find while I'm playing it, but I can't tell yeah. you how well, to I fucking it. fix it, like, specifically. Yeah. I can tell yeah, you I what you could do, but... Yes, I can tell you what to fix, but I have no idea how to fix it. Exactly, right? Um... That's why people talk about the Mercer effect. Yeah, well, yeah. the the Mercer effect's way, uh, way. It's more than just like taking what he like the 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 uh, the theme and going yeah. with it. The Mercer effect is doing exactly what Mercer does and right? trying to have the same level of success and badassery exactly. that Critical Role has. Yeah, like yeah. right out the gate, which is yeah. impossible. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, that was our first ever. Wow. First ever topic. Um, yeah. I did, however, watch Devils and Dice. Ah, there you yeah. are. Uh, it was pretty okay. Uh, cultured, in fact, I would say. Because <laughs> it's an anime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, I see you're a man of culture. <laughs> and drop in on a continent that you've only barely named. It is totally okay to say, hey, this campaign is gonna take place in this one area. Mm -hmm. Especially if setting that boundary means that you can make that area really well developed yes. and rich. World building takes a lot of time and energy. So the least we can do for ourselves is make sure that we're building something that we enjoy on a scale that we can manage. Absolutely. Um, yes. What, what I would say is if, if you wanna do like, um, some some really simple world building 
do like one shots right and really like mm-hmm. work on that specific thing okay yes. like you you work on that specific town that specific little bit of land whatever the fuck it is and mm-hmm. you you flesh that out and then you can start building off of that right yes that can be part of your overarching world but like you can then like maybe even do a different one shot and then start building off of that and then think about how they connect right Mm -hmm. like how if they do it all or if they do it all exactly could this be on a totally different continent or something right a different Um, continent a different city yeah different plane yeah completely unrelated events absolutely like you can just fucking go for it Um, and the thing is i think if you have multiple one shots the players kind of expect them to not be linked and so you can absolutely spring that on them where it's like yeah you know you do a one shot with uh character a b and c yeah and then when they finish that you do one shot two with characters uh e d and f right yeah i think yeah yeah a b c d e yeah Yeah, yeah. um (laughs) and then turns out that even though these people are completely different the events were linked right exactly and that's all that's something special for the players not the characters a hundred percent hundred percent like and then you could even have a third thing where because of a b c d e f uh now g h and i have something they have to take care of because of that like it's a whole like and then it's like oh my god everything's gonna you know and then after those three you have each player controlling three characters and you go to the finale yeah which would be a nightmare but it would be awesome it would be fucking awful (laughs) <laughs> but it's a possibility. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it would be cool as fuck for them, yes. not for you. That's the DM that would suck. But right. <laughs> that's not the point. <laughs> um Devils and Dice effect? Oh, mm-hmm. oh no. Yeah. Um Yeah, never watched Critical Role either. And hey you peeps. Hey Mog, how's it going? Hello. Um Devils <sighs> and Dice Effect is a thing. Well, uh, there you go. Well, okay, so then if it is a thing, please explain it to me. I need to know what the hell I'm affecting. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, under planning, I'm a pro at that. I just end up oh. BSing my way through. Uh, you know, just like, fine. Just like Brogan. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, that's the thing. It's fine. As long as <laughs> yeah, you're no, good yeah. at it. Yeah. yeah, if you're good at it, great. That's yeah. good. Um, hey, Indigo, how's it going? Good oh, evening. Man, we got a lot of people here. Yeah. Um... But yeah, uh, like, that's the other thing with, like, doing improv stuff for world building. Like, it's so it's so simple to then just, like, pick up with maybe even your characters are, like, implementing things, right? Where they're just, like, or your players, excuse me, are implementing mm-hmm. things where they're just, like, hey, is this uh, the case here? And then you think about it for a second and go, yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. it is. It's like there's no reason why it wouldn't be. Exactly. Um, you might... You might think of an example of that from Devils and Dice. <laughs> the spag bag. That's right. And the all of those. ice cream one. Yeah, the all, crickets. Of those, all of those uh, little food stands. Yeah. They were great. Purely because Brogan decided to be an ass. <laughs> like, what are um, their names? Oh. Uh, right, yeah. Um, <laughs> time with him. So, so all that kind of stuff is... And... and um. Sorry for the crinkling. I'm opening a chocolate bar. No, you're fine. It's not. It's, honestly, I wasn't noticing it. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah. So just the the mutual world building that you can do with your players is super super useful. Um, mm-hmm. especially it takes a lot of pressure off you as a DM. Um, yes. because and hell, you might even like world build a whole place before. <laughs> like, yeah before like you you play it it could be cool i mean um for like a, a character's backstory you could have them really build up like their own like starting place wherever they came mm-hmm. from right and then incorporate that wherever you want in your world yeah um and then one of the best parts about uh working with your players yeah in world building is that if it goes wrong you can blame them <laughs> <laughs> that's right because <laughs> i know i do that with them oh no <laughs> it's like well this is your fucking this is your shit you fucking come up with it <laughs> 
You'll see a lot of DM advice in general that advises against overplanning. People will warn you about players derailing you, skipping over entire cities, and ignoring your key NPCs. They'll say, don't plan too much, just be prepared to improvise. And I'm not trying to say that I don't understand how frustrating that is. It sucks to work really hard on something that your players sidestep or ignore. But I think this extremely common advice can quickly turn into a slippery slope of underplanning. Mm. I have no doubt Good. that your players will skip something that you've intricately planned planned, but they won't skip everything you've intricately planned. Also if you true. rely too heavily on improvising your world building, you're building your world on inconsistencies, cliches and tropes, well, half-baked ideas, and gut reactions. Okay, so... I would say gut reactions is the most accurate one. Yeah, I don't think it could... Like, you could think about it for a second, and then yeah. you could, like, commit it to your world and write mm. it down. Yeah, um, because that's the thing. A lot of people might get... Like, especially new DMs, they might be afraid of slowing the game down yeah. when somebody asks, what is this? Just stop for a second and say, uh... Yeah. It's okay for you to stop and think. Definitely. I it would is say also okay for you to say, hang on, I hadn't thought that... Uh, I had not thought of that. Give me a moment. Absolutely. That is like okay. A, I think then one of one of our mistakes is not giving yourself the time to think. Yes, like that would that be a should big be the mistake. mistake. Yeah, absolutely. That, yes. um, because that's something that happens to me in Devils and Dice all the fucking time. Yeah, specifically when Brogan or one of the other ones decides to be a dick and be like, "Hey, what's this character's name?" Hey man, now I just want to know. No, that's fine. It's and it's <laughs> you know, specifically when Brogan's asking, he's like, oh, what's these restaurants' names that right, I just right, came right. up with? You know. Um But he, the thing is, there is a wonderful website that yes. all four of us use called fantasy name generators.com, I think yep. it is. Yep. Fantasy Where you can go generator. there and there are so many different categories of names that you yeah. can go through. There's like village names, shop names, tavern yeah. names, casino names whatever dragons yeah. minotaurs all the different races so yeah. what i do is if i know that i'm gonna need some names i go to that website and i select the kind of name that i need be it human typhling dragon whatever mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and i start generating names and if it sounds good I fucking copy and paste it into my text document so Absolutely. that way they're like oh what's this character's name uh it's that yep and 100%. there you go 100%. So, you can do that, but obviously there are times when you're not able to, you know, a name isn't what's being asked for. Right. It could be something But bigger. in those in those scenarios, just say just let them know you need time to think. Yeah. It's as simple absolutely. as that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um uh Lux says I do envy Boo's ability to set up a world that has all that stuff in it just waiting for you to find and do. I feel like I'm a lot more messy about how I come up with stuff. Uh, it's, trust me, it's not, uh, it's not, e it's still not easy. Just because I can do it does not mean it is not difficult. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't, like, some of it comes to me, but not all of it. <laughs> this, this lad has taken his time with writing I stuff. I have taken my time. Yes. It is, uh, quite a lot. Yes. Especially coming up with, honestly, names. My thing, I have the worst fucking thing when it, about D&D &D stuff, mm. tabletop RPGs. Hmm. Because of this hobby being so derivative, mm. it's very derivative of stuff. Mm -hmm. Magic is not an original concept. Dragons are not original. Nope. Fantasy is not original. Not really. You know, all this shit. None of it is original. But I have this unquenchable thirst for my shit to be memorable. That's mm. it. It doesn't have to be incredible, but I want someone to be like, dude, remember that time we did that thing? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all mm -hmm. I want. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can tell you right now, for those of you uh, who who didn't see the live recording, um, there's going to be a thing that comes out tomorrow in Devils and Dice that uh, is memorable to me. Um, yeah, it was whole... one of those moments. Yeah, it was great. I've had a few. I've had several of those in yeah. Devils and Dice. Absolutely. The uh, the betrayal of <laughs> yeah, 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 and um, the diary reading, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and now this. Yep. And probably most of the encounters with Dis. Mm hmm Yeah. Probably. Oh, yeah. The whole and watching Mexican fight. Oh, man. 
Yeah, that. That's great. And maybe possibly the introduction of like the actual reveal of the final boss character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I can't help it. I need it. So the hardest thing I have, the hardest thing for me is making something that stands out. Mm -hmm. It's so hard. <laughs> it's so difficult to do it with like everything. Yeah. Even though it doesn't have to be everything. Right. I know that, but I can't help it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. It's not easy for me either. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's just I don't know. I, I, I for for what I do, I you just, just wanted roll. To, yeah, I just wanted to. And, I just wanted to go well, you know. Yeah, and honestly, I envy you your ability to be so chill about it. I yeah, can't. I can't. I, it hurts. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's been years of me worrying about a lot of shit. And mm -hmm. so now I'm like starting to get to that point of like I can just not give a fuck about a few things, and that's yeah. okay, right? <laughs> yeah. Because if I worry about all this stuff all the time, I'm just gonna die. I'm just gonna yeah. die young and full of worry, and otherwise, See, like I don't want that. <laughs> See, here's the thing: yeah. I have uh, cheated the system because mm. I don't worry about anything else. Ah, I just worry about this. There. This is the only thing I worry about. There you go. Because <laughs> yeah, I no. don't watch the news. <laughs> Right, yeah. No, I didn't. Um, All of my worry is right here. <laughs> Fair enough. Um uh roll tables are your friend. Yes. Yes. Uh, Pinterest has a ton of them. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of places that have a ton of roll tables. Absolutely. Yes. Um tables are great. Uh one thing I've always wanted to do, but never had a group who wanted to do it, is to make a game out of the world building. My top two ideas would be to run a modded Civ game or maybe some card-based deal, says Draco Kraken. Oh, okay. Uh, and then uh, Indigo says, uh, Microscope is a game about making settings historical timeline, which includes a lot of world building. So there you go. Maybe look into that. Interesting. Um, I, I remember there was another one. Uh, I don't know if it's Microscope. Actually, let me look up Microscope because it might also be that. Because I watched somebody play a, a game... Um, where it was kind of just like that um microscope uh game uh let's see yeah i think it actually is this yeah because it was just like prompts basically in a way and like trying to figure out the world based off of those prompts and it was just like a big storytelling, like world building session of just like everybody putting out these ideas and weaving them together. And it was really cool. That's neat. Yeah. I think that was this. Anyway. So good shout. Um, uh, and Lux says, well, hard things are hard, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take this improv thing back to its roots. If you see an actual improv troupe perform, there are setups, because without them, it's no fun. If you just put two people on stage together and say, be funny, even very good, very funny performers would likely struggle a little. But when you say, Bob, you're an elephant, Fran, you're a grocery store cashier, then you're gonna get a way funnier and more cohesive skit. It's That's the true. same premise when you're improvising in D&D. Yes, you can improvise some great stuff, but the better your framework, the easier it'll be to do good improv within it. So yes, you should be aware the players will go off the rails, and yes, you should be prepared to improvise. But don't let that stop you from doing the work of having at least a foundational understanding of how everything in your world works, so you aren't left floundering when players defy the odds and actually do exactly what you would have expected. That's where we're gonna end it today, mm. but next week we are gonna go over five more common world building mistakes that you might be making in- Okay. Um, that went really quick, so I guess we'll go to the second one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Might as well. Um, yeah. So now I notice a video down below. It says six world building mistakes. Yeah, that's that's the one. It's actually six of them. Apparently, okay. she lied. The liar. Oh, oh I've been God. lied to. Same shirt and everything. I know. Okay, liar. I love the thumbnail for why dungeon masters hate pets, and it's just the cat yeah. in the chair that she's yeah. yelling at. That's funny. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I don't oh, hate pets. I like Mocha. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and Jerry. I just kill him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, my boy. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to. Uh, this is six more world building mm. mistakes DMs make. Also by Jenny D. Yes. I want to know why it went up to six. Yeah.
Hello something friends and welcome back comment. to part two of my list of 10 world building mistakes that DMs make. If you haven't seen part one, they don't really need to be watched in order, but I would suggest that you eventually check out both. Creating an entire world for a <clears> DD <throat> game is a daunting process and I think it's inevitable that you'll make some mistakes while trying to get everything together. So I hope that you don't see the things on this list as anything to be embarrassed about. Instead, I hope that they'll give you some new insights so you can approach your world building in a way that's easier for you and more fun for your players. Yeah. Now let's jump right back into it with mistake number six. Another common mistake, and something that's actually touched on in the DMG's section about campaign events, is designing a world that's very stable and unchanging. This is the king, here are his lands. Huh? This is the area where the giants that's the live mistake. everywhere. These oh. ships have a regular trade route that goes to these ports in okay. these countries. But instability generates change, change yes. generates yeah. conflict, and okay. conflict makes good. for good storytelling. What if the king vanished on a diplomatic trip? Everyone is looking for him, and tensions have become high with the country that he was visiting, as many suspect foul play? What if the giants are migrating, bringing waves of attacks? What if ships have started disappearing on this route and there are rumors of a giant sea serpent? You can certainly choose to create a flat, stable world and then superimpose adventure onto it. You can have a firm, long-standing monarchy and a group of giants that live in one spot and- So, okay, so, oh wait, I, actually let me hear the rest of this part. Mm. and a group of giants that live in one spot and a naval trade route that works as intended and also have exciting quests in your world. But consider that building some instability into your world will naturally lead to adventure. When you create these- So, so my, my initial take on that, um, uh, that suggestion is not that you always have them be stable 100% of the time though. Because yeah. that would be stupid. Why would... Yeah, no. Why would they say that? No, no, no. It's literally... You have these things that are stable that you can draw... Like, you can fall back on. That, yeah. like... If you need to, to create adventure, you go to these stable things, and then you in, you insert the instability. Yes. Right? Like, like the like, change can happen. Exactly. Like, it's you not You don't gonna, just build it into to it. Yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't have to... Like, if you want it to be that this world always has an unstable trade route for some reason, like, then it's like, oh, then why is this Then it still... wouldn't be a trade route. Exactly. <laughs> that's my point. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Because these things are, are absolutely what they are, but they can, they can be changed, like, in the future because of whatever the fuck you've come up with. Right? Yes. This it's it's a weird take to to yeah, take that, it as that, don't make everything so stable, <laughs> where it's yeah, like oh it's, it's otherwise so, the world doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of it's honestly I don't know if it's a bad take as, as so much as it is just bad wording. Maybe it you might know what be. I mean. I I guess it's just a misunderstanding of of it in of, general. Yeah, which is which is fair enough. Um, I guess it's just a, a fault on both parts. Um, mm. because like. If if you want an element of instability um, to just be baked into the world, then um, I guess making something that always changes other things could be that instability that, that you've mm -hmm. baked in. Um, perhaps uh, uh, the world spouts um, uh, wild magic fields in random areas, like, and it just mm. fucks up everything every now and again. That's a yeah, every that's, now and then. There's a fucking nuclear fallout or some shit. Basically, right? Point. Yeah. Um. Any anything that could really change the world state, um, that isn't necessarily stable itself. Um, yes. That would be fine, but like something that is like a trade route or something, you, you want that thing to be stable because otherwise, why the fuck is it there? Yeah, you why know? would it be a trade route? It yeah, wouldn't. like if it's if every time I sail out on my fucking merchant ship and a kraken comes up and eats my fucking boat, like why would I keep being a merchant? <laughs> you know, or why would I keep sailing that way? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like this this trade route needs to be changed. Okay, <laughs> we'll do now, that. Now here's the thing. Yeah, I think it would be interesting to have that scenario, but force them to have to do it anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That could. That would be really interesting. That would be the thing of like, um, probably they've tried to come up with ways to to combat this, and they have varying success, right? Yeah. Um, so it's like, like we have to go. We have to take supplies to this island. Yeah. Because this is where all of the, I don't know. This is where all the best soldiers in the empire are trained, or whatever. Sure, yeah. And they need their supplies. Sure. But there's krakens in the water around because they've been sailing back and forth between this island for so long. Yeah. 
that the Krakens are like, oh, hey, it's free food up there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and so now that's... we have to bring, like, depth charges and whatever, and it's yeah. not 100% effective. That would be kind of interesting. Yeah, and so that's the thing. That makes it a stability. That's the thing. Because yeah. it, 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 it is a constant state of the world where this route has this happen, and they have come up with a way to not 100% take care of it, but it is something that they can do to take care of it, right? Yes. And they live still here because otherwise they couldn't right yeah and and they would lose all those people on the island and like the that's the only way that they can make this work so that mm -hmm. that makes it so that it is a fundamental um yeah so then like then you fuck with it after that or you have the players fuck with it so that it makes it no longer a fundamental that they have to worry about these kraken now they're actually fighting the kraken they defeat the kraken and now it's gone and, and now the, it's good and now you have a, a more stable thing you've created yes. an opportunity for them to to um become these heroes and actually have this faction or whatever um like them with their reputation right and then they yeah. can sing praises and then have all this special shit right but it's yeah. a kraken so it's going to take a while for them to get to that point John johnny kraken killer yes johnny kraken killer that man he did it oh yeah he it fucking, was him. it was it was a woman Oh my God! Oh, I, I'm sorry. It was a weird. It's a strange name. I understand. I understand. It was spelled yeah, it was Johnny. It was... Johnny with an I. Ah, yes. I understand. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I understand. Yes. Okay. Um. Uh, I missed the first four t mistakes. Uh. Uh. You can go back and watch the video. Yeah, I, I don't remember <laughs> them gang. Now, off the top of my head. Yeah, Vod gang. Yeah. We don't remember. They went really. They went really fast. They were good tips. Yeah, they were. They were pretty good tips. Um. Uh, the Empire likes a stable, orderly regime. Yes. Mm. Um, trying to think of how I would say this, but stable things can be destabilized, and that's one way a story can exist. Yeah, yeah. which is exactly what she's saying. It's just the, the whole, like, the whole having something be inherently unstable is weird. Um, yeah, because the way she's wording it is very strange. Yes. She's saying don't build... Effectively, what she is saying, word for word... Well, not word for word, but... Uh, she's saying, don't build a stable world. Yeah. Make sure that your world has instability in it. Exactly. Which doesn't which, make a lot of sense. No. You want a stable because, world that can be destabled. destabled. Yes. Yeah. Because if it wasn't, if it wasn't stable, it would have been, it wouldn't have been built there. Unless it's Monty Python and they're building castles that sink into the swamp three times. Exactly. Because <laughs> they don't learn. Yeah, they don't learn. And it's for <laughs> comedy. Exactly. Um, but now, if you're doing comedy campaign, yeah, then it takes on a whole different, you know, because yeah. then you can do that. Absolutely, tone can very much influence exactly yes. how a world is built. Like, yes, a hundred percent. Um, I mean, it's kind of influenced exactly how my world is built, yeah. or at least the devil, the hell world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, or if the players get in trouble, the trade route could be a punishment. Send them to the trade galleons. Ooh, they have to oh, survive man. the kraken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I there thought of go. a better idea actually. Instead mm -hmm. of it being uh, where the soldiers are trained, it's right. where the god of that religion actually descended to the world at one ah, point or ascended. Right, right, right. So, so it's, it's a like a holy place. Really? So it's yeah. Like, yes. It's a pilgrimage that they so have. So it's very important. Understandable. Yeah. Yes points of instability. You don't even have to use the resultant conflict as your main plot. But if these kind of changes are actually happening in your world, it creates depth and makes everything feel more real. Plus, it can create a sense of urgency when your players understand that this world isn't an unchanging sandbox that they can play in at will, but a living world that mm. will change around them. If they choose to ignore the giant migration, maybe they'll come back to this town later and find it destroyed and vacant. If they ignore the rumors of the missing ships, they might find it more and more difficult to locate certain items, like mm -hmm. healing potions, as trade shipments go missing. It, it, the rest of that, like, 100% I agree with, because we've talked about it a, few, a bunch of times, of, like, have have um, time limits, quote-unquote, right? Where mm -hmm. it's not a necessarily specified time limit. It's just, if they yeah. take too long, something could happen that makes yeah. that situation worse. Yes. Um... Uh, hmm, I'll try to remember the point for a comment, but I would argue that a realistic, uh, realistic wouldn't even, sorry. Oh, a realistic world wouldn't ever be completely stable. Some parts of it are stable, but entropy also exists. 
I would agree. That's the thing. Yes, fair. We we that's why I, if you want to have an unstable element, like I said, you have to make that element specifically unstable to and make it make sense. That's the problem yes. because the whole it, world just can't be unstable. Yeah, exactly. Because then it's anarchy. Yes. There has to be some pillars yes. somewhere. Exactly. And, like you and can, there has you, to be enough to support the rest of it. Yes, en entirely so. Yeah. Um got to head up for work though now. Uh, now though. Fair enough. See you Lux. All right. See ya. See you in the comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Most of us aren't playing D&D oh in order to recreate okay. real life. Well. That's kind of the opposite of what fantasy means. And while everyone has different levels of interest in the realism of their fantasy worlds, if you prioritize realism over what's fun or what's interesting, you are gonna have a problem. I think we can all agree that we would rather play a game that's unrealistic but enjoyable over the alternative of a game that's very realistic but no fun to play. For example, in my homebrew game, I spaced a lot of my cities really far apart from each other because I thought that was the most realistic way for them to have developed. But the result really, of this no. spacing was that I functionally trapped my players in one spot by making travel time consuming and difficult. And when my players did want to move, it was immensely boring because they couldn't get anywhere without being on the road for days at a time. And well, at I the mean... time, I had no <laughs> uh, oh, wait, idea how to handle that. This is special. Okay. okay. So I agree, first off. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> realism is yes. good and fun for mm -hmm. some people <laughs> right yes. it, it yes. depends on your table and how much realism they really want um yes i but in the at least in the in general yeah prioritizing realism over fun is bad is is usually bad yes, yes. um and like I know 3.5 has the rules of you only gain like one hit point every day that you go to sleep after, you know, mm. you've gotten hurt, but that's just, it's so much time. We don't have yeah. that much time. Stop it. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. The problem is with rules like that, yep. it facilitates people going, can we just wait? Yeah. And then you just fast forward. Exactly. So fast forwarding is totally fine. Yes, well. and it's fine, but the problem is that it doesn't it doesn't do anything. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because in the situations where you're missing HP and you're safe, they're just going to say, can we just fast forward until we fully healed? Yes, exactly. It, in, it, instead of just saying, we take a long rest. Obviously, obviously, uh, like some uh, realism rules are yes. better than others because mm -hmm. like they facilitate more fun. But if you really want that actual realism experience, mm -hmm. Um, if your table does, then obviously going for it, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, go, go right for it. And like, uh, what I would say for those kinds of things, like with the, with the waiting days, have things happen during those days. Like, it's not just that they're going to bed and then, you know, they, they have a whole town that they can like peruse every day. Unless they don't want to. I, exactly. If they That's don't the want to, you absolutely can just go, okay, let's go. Let's get to the, yeah. let's get to when you guys are healed up. And, yeah. uh, but then in those cases, I would then implement the whole time goes by things happen, right? Yeah. Like whatever you were doing, it might get worse, you know? Yeah. Um, or if you already had a job, they may have hired somebody else. Exactly. Um, it's not just these players usually in these worlds. There are many people like mercenary companies specifically, um, mm -hmm. and other potential adventurers, um, whatever you want, just some random person who really wants to do a job could just mm -hmm. take the job, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> I would caution, though, not to make it like the players are the only heroes out there. Monsters get slain and things get done without them, though they may have an important part to play. Yes, Steely. Yes. I played Monster Hunter. Nobody else slays monsters but me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, I made it. It's Con of Seven, by the way. Hey, how's Hello. it going? Good to see you. Um, yes. And then Lux also says, there is one stable thing. Lux will comment. There you mm. go. That's right. Indeed. That's the stability that I base my whole life on. So if you don't do it, uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll put that responsibility on you. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're fine. 
actually sucked because I had big plans for these other cities and wanted my players to go there, but I had accidentally disincentivized them to travel by building my world this way. Now, some people love having long distance travel in their games, and that is fine, but for me and my players, this wasn't an intentional choice we were making. This was just me prioritizing what I thought was realistic over the kind of game we actually wanted to play. A lot of D&D rules as written violate realism in favor of something that makes gameplay easier, less complicated, or more fun. Like fall damage, yes. or the types of horrific injuries that can be cured with a good night's sleep. Internal consistency mm. is generally more important than realism. Your rivers don't have to follow the laws of physics. Your world's biomes don't need to hold up to examination by an ecologist. Unless, of course, that's fun for you. If a question comes up that hinges on realism, your answer will set a precedent. So mm -hmm. be prepared for the precedent that you want to set. You are completely allowed to let your players know that you're not trying to recreate real life and that your ruling stands in your fantasy world, regardless of how things work in the real world. I I absolutely I a hundred percent agree. Absolutely. Um, yes. I just very much think that a, a good dose of realism will really add to your games. That's oh, just it absolutely though. does. Yeah, uh, and, and I the, I like realism too. Yeah, and, and like it's just when like I'm still fine with the whole uh, a a dwarf can jump off a mountain and be totally fine, and his legs are not inside of his like skull. Um, yeah. After taking a fall and then second wind and do his thing, like uh, sure, fuck it, I don't yeah, know sure, at that point. Not? What are we you gonna know? do? You know, like that's just you know, how it it's is. It's a cartoon. It's yeah. Looney Tunes. At that point, it is Looney Tunes because at that point, like, what am I supposed to do? Um, yeah. Uh, You're going but, purely by numbers. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but in that case, it's also like, it really depends on, on the on the group. Because at that point, I'd go, man, you're falling real far. Like, and you're a, you're a tiny man in a bunch of armor. <laughs> yeah. I, I think this is going to be... Then, are, then the armor will protect me. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> like, you might think so. Um, right. At that point, I'd probably go like, dude, I... I uh, yeah. <laughs> you sure you want to do this? Because I don't know about that. Like, I am wearing armor. I'd be fine. Right, 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 right. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, we had, we would have set a precedent in our session zero together of yeah. like, if you jump off a fucking mountain, you might just mm. die. <laughs> yeah. Like, mm. <laughs> like no, no matter what the 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 health says, what the rules say about falling and your second wind. <laughs> You, you're probably gonna fucking die. Hmm. <laughs> right? Um, just because some of that stuff is kind of silly and ridiculous, and sometimes that's fine, but sometimes it's like, all right, it doesn't fit the tone at the moment. Hmm. Why did they not make Cyndaquil and Quilava look any different, but only Hisuian Typhlosion looks different? I don't know. That's weird. Very weird choice. Genie. I don't know what this oh, is. No. It's probably... Is this a Christmas Carol parody? Yeah, okay. Parodies. Parodies mean ads. Yeah. Cobalt Press, though. Yes, they do. Cobalt Press is cool. Hey, I have those books. Yeah. They are good. Good for you, Jim. I don't have that one. Good for you. It's Cobalt Press. I wish yeah. we were sponsored by the Cobalt Press. I wish. We could get their That'd books cool. for free. Oh. This is probably unsurprising to anyone who knows that I'm basically a self-employed one-woman show, but I'm a pretty type A person. I put a lot of pressure on I don't on know what the fuck a type A is. Uh, uh, I think it's, um, like, type A and type B where... I, I don't fucking know. Let yeah, me, well, you know what? Let me look it up. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck is a type A person? Type a person. Let's learn something today, everyone. Ugh, I don't want to have to Google fucking personality types. Type A refers to a pattern of behavior and personality associated with high achievement, competitiveness, and impatience. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, self control. Uh, I don't. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> she brought it up. <laughs> I. It doesn't matter. Good for. It. It means she's less uh, likely to back down on something. Okay. And if I mess it up, it's very easy to interpret that as an overall failure. So when I say this, oh, I go. say this with love and understanding, but you're gonna mess stuff up. You're gonna have inconsistencies. You're gonna change your mind about you things. You hear that, Alejo? You're gonna yeah, accidentally write something in that totally <laughs> Oh, believe me, I fucking know. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> and I hope that somebody's gonna call me out when I have an inconsistency. Yes. That's the thing. I know you want that. Right, exactly. I want to know how to improve that shit because I would like for my things to be consistent. 
Because yes. otherwise, what do I have? What do mm. I have? I don't care about your fun. <laughs> you have a thing that is inconsistent. Uh, <laughs> the worst fate imaginable. Uh, um, <laughs> the mog says, blood type? Uh, maybe. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, last message from Lux. An adventuring tax would probably be realistic, but probably not fun. Well, you can uh, use yeah. it as a plot hook. Yeah, it's true. Mm. It's like, hey, the this fucking adventuring tax is dumb as hell let's yeah. go on an adventure to not have that be a thing yeah spirals <laughs> out of control and that is okay if you set the expectation for yourself that you're gonna write a perfectly cohesive realistic functional world and then present it to your players fully formed and it will work flawlessly for an entire campaign oh, you I don't are get that going last part. to be disappointed <laughs> one of the kindest and most useful things you can do for yourself when building a world is to allow yourself the space to make those mistakes and the space to fix them remember this is a game that we're playing for fun we're not contractually obligated to stick with whatever decisions we make in the fictional dungeon game. Don't be afraid of making changes, admitting to mistakes, retconning, talking honestly with your players about how things are going. There's a huge difference between a world making sense in your head and a world making sense when you spread it out on the gaming table and let a bunch of people stick their fingers in it. The easiest way to end up with a world that works and is fun for everyone is to remain flexible, have realistic expectations, and stay open to change if it'll improve the game for everyone. Now, of course, overall, I say, yes, be flexible, 100%. Yes. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to try to not have inconsistencies in my shit, but yeah, it's true. <laughs> I don't think that's being and you flexible. Can't, it's not a binary thing. You can't yeah. have both. Yeah, exactly. That's it's a little, you know, a little yeah. bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Um, mm. Type A person, type B. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, feel, I, don't know. I feel like the adventuring tax collector had better be badass or else they might have a short career, says Steely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why oh, I'm yeah, thinking would it be. would be like a, a um like a self or not self imposed. A uh either the guild itself employs a tax, um, or like the government somehow employs a tax, you know, something that isn't going to be taken down by one guy <laughs> right mm -hmm. like if somebody shanks this guy well there's still that guy, that tax collector who's also employed by the government or whatever you know After my whole section about how starting small is a mistake, this one is gonna feel even more egregious, but- Yeah, it's almost like it wasn't a mistake and they're both two different styles and then they're like, this is kind of dumb to have them be mistakes. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> This was a mistake that I made in my first homebrew campaign. I had all these big, complex, interesting plans for the larger scale plot, but completely failed to make sure that getting there was also interesting. It's very exciting to imagine your players slowly working their way through their adventures, getting to know one another and growing in power, to finally climactically battle a great foe and triumph. But not to be a downer, but a lot of D&D games never make it to the end. And True. even if they do, yeah. it's important to remember that most of your players' experiences will be in the moment to moment. They'll be in specific yes. shops or towns or talking to specific NPCs. Mm -hmm. If you focus exclusively on the big picture, the actual boots on the ground gameplay will suffer for it. So yes, figure out what major factors are influencing your world. And by all means, think about the big bad's dastardly plan. But don't forget to also imagine yourself walking around around the town where your players will be learning about this intrigue mm -hmm. and picking up those breadcrumbs that will eventually lead them there. Who lives here? What do they do all day? And no, well, what's that's a mistake I make, going to be honestly. Fun and interesting for your Would you say that that's one that I make? Because hearing it described, maybe I missed a few things, but I feel like I might make that mistake as well. Uh, in the sense of not having like the small stuff? Yeah, not having the small stuff be interesting? I don't know. No, I think I think the small stuff is interesting. Um I think I think or at the very least entertaining. Yeah, no, I think I think it's all been fine. That's the thing. Um because every time we go somewhere, um even if you don't have it like fully gotten through, I don't know if that's been the case, but I guess the the best example would be the the fucking stands like of the uh, of true. the food stands. All I knew what all I knew when we did that was I wanted to have a hot and haunted hot spring with stands in it. That's right. It. Yeah. Um. So then it's just like I like the the whole hot spring. I mean, it made sense. You know, like yeah, I, I had I had fun around it. Like yeah, and all that kind of shit. Um. 
but like uh the the shops have been uh like very entertaining because of yeah, the people like Nora, inside them. Yeah, Novakosh and Moramok. Yeah, and exactly. Whatever his name was, like, the guy even, you robbed. Like I yeah, uh, <laughs> of of uh, v something. Uh, Vargamon. Vargamon, yes. Um and um uh even the butcher shop, like I still remember the fucking That's spike right. devils that With, like, like put like all meat the on... meat on the spikes, right? Yeah, and they just fucking sit in the oven. <laughs> Yeah, and because they're because devils. They're immune to fire. Yeah, exactly. Like I still remember that stuff. So I think I think it's just as long as you can come up with it either in the moment or just thinking about it for a few moments, like it's totally yeah. fine. And like I don't think you're 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 bad at that. Oh my god, did you know they made an uncharted movie? Yeah, they yeah, I know. Uh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's Mark Wahlberg and Tom Holland. I know, I know. <laughs> I don't care. Tom Holland is not Nathan Drake. I know. I don't. That's Come why. On, I, he does. I don't care. I don't. Care. <laughs> um. Grow a beard if he had a gun to his head. <laughs> that's true. Um. Uh. There. Uh, hey, Bramble. Um. Oh. There are adventuring guilds in my campaign world. Uh, adventurers pay dues, but in return they receive plenty of benefits like lodging and equipment. <sighs> uh, yeah. They were made by and act as a contract workforce for the government. There you go. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's that sounds kind of familiar. It sounds a little bit like Goblin Slayer, but then I haven't, I've never actually seen Goblin Slayer. I've never seen it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, Steely <laughs> says, I love the small stuff you come up with, uh, e uh, e.g. the collectible figure machines. <laughs> that's also true. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Because um, for a second there, I was a little bit worried about that, but yeah, okay. Never no, mind. no, you're doing great. Um, uh, if you want to keep your tax collectors safe, make them devils. They are obsessed with contracts and order, mm -hmm. and if they die, they can get resummoned and tell the army who killed them. That's true. That's true. Good you know what? Shout. You know what? One of the better, uh, a really good way to do it would be is make it a golem. Mm. Make an iron golem. Yeah. And then, like, make him hollow, mm -hmm. and then just like. There's a hole where his neck would be. Right. You pour that shit it. in there. Yeah. And then you put the head on and you activate it. Yeah. Boom. Now you've got all your taxes in a solid iron golem that right. resists all non-magical attacks. Yeah. That'd be super cool. Um, Don't do that. Jesus Christ. That'd be so fucking annoying to rob. <laughs> I'm just imagining that in payday and holy shit. <laughs> yeah. God, no. <laughs> um, uh, If Nathan Fillion wasn't 50 years old, he'd be perfect casting. Yes. 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 Hundred yes. percent. Uh, you know, Ryan Reynolds would be a good casting for him. He would too. He like, would be a good Nathan didn't... Drake. Uh, anyway, I don't know. It's okay. It's Hollywood. It's popular. Understand. Yeah. Um. Uh. Neither have I uh, seen Goblin Slayer. That is, says Bramble. That's fair. Mm. Uh. It is both a safe and security guard. Yes. The the yes. golem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> players to engage with. This is the kind of foundational information that can be easy to forget if you're too zoomed out. Listen, I love a good lore dump, but even I don't want to have to read 10 pages of single-spaced fantasy history in order to start playing a game. These yeah, no characters sure. are supposed to live in this world, and if players have to memorize pages and pages of information in order to understand it, you are going to end up with some players who just don't understand it. Not yeah. everyone has the attention span or the learning style to take in information that way. Even when you're reading a book, it's a hallmark of a great writer when the exposition about the world can be delivered as part of the story, Yep. instead of as a heavy-handed, information-dense prologue. In D&D, mm -hmm. we have so many opportunities to deliver world-building in a more organic way. Ideally, your players will learn about the world as they navigate it, by observing how this information actually impacts their character and the world around them. Instead of spending 15 minutes describing the entire ecosystem of an area when players enter it, let them learn the, the details fuck? as they... Who are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know, man. Who are you talking about? Who does that? Like, okay, I will I will entertain the thought that there are some yeah. people who might, okay? Because there are all types of people in this world. That's fair yes. enough. I, who the fuck, though? <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I... I <laughs> If it the, needs well, to... You know who it is. You know mm -hmm. who it is? Yeah. It's the people that you hear about on Crit Crab videos. That's so true. So they do exist. That's true. You're right. You're right. Okay. So fair enough. That's the thing, though. Ginny, I'm sorry. Those people are not watching your videos. Um, yeah. Or if they are, they're not listening. Yeah. They're hearing you. They're not listening. Yeah. Um, because 
those those people learn very slowly or do not learn. That's yeah. the problem. Um, that's, that's and problem. they need they need direct experience, I think, or somebody to just or, say, "Hey, dude, stop!" Yeah, or somebody to fucking slap him in the face and say, "Stop!" <laughs> yeah, some of those things. Oh my god. Um, yeah. Garibay. Well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um. So I, I like, and again, I this is a good this is a good thing to say because there are a lot of people who might write out a preamble and might like go, "Okay." first time group let's let me read to you but that's the thing if you're because like and and i'll i'll even say us we we listened to boo's uh, little preamble that he that he wrote out for us to get a, a good feeling about the world and i had actually a great i time. didn't read it i didn't write it oh that was verbatim out of the fucking book oh okay well there you go yeah okay i, I then i'm mistaken but regardless you you read the entirety of that that passage out of the book that yes. really sets up um, the world and dis and the hells, right? And yes. and creation and all that kind of stuff, right? Yes. Um, and I was there for it. I was 100% about it because I like story time. That's fun. Yes. I like it. Mm. Um, and I think all of us kind of do. Like, we like to listen when people talk um, on occasion. <laughs> um, and so it works for us. But obviously, if you're... Um, if your table is not full of people like us, then yeah, you, you don't want to do that. You probably want to give them little clues about, like, once they are in the world, like, give them uh, the, the hierarchy and structure of how people are in this town. Just based on dress, uh, the way they act towards each other, uh, you know, um, things that are sold, all that kind of stuff. Just to have them see it and experience it, they might not take to it immediately, Mm -hmm. But they, it's there for them to look through, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> Bramble says, Steely, how dare you transgress against our Lord and Savior? That's true. <laughs> That's a lashing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. That's Steely. a lashing and ten minutes of listening to sermons. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You'll listen to a full Garibay video and you will uh. like it. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Steely says in response Alas bourbon That devilish drink has led me to it <laughs> mm. <laughs> Fair enough um, <laughs> But yeah So yeah. I, I agree with the whole show don't tell Because that's just a, a basic thing of, of writing and storytelling in general Because yes. nobody wants to Listen to you say And the grass is green And blue flowers are Popping up everywhere Because inside of them they have this little thing where, like you know <laughs> yeah like like whenever you guys enter an area like a very specific new area i will describe it so that you can get yeah. a feel for how different it is like exactly when you went to the abyss or when you went yeah. to the surface or yeah. when you went to the forest or the underdark 100 or avernus there, there's... Or at the start of the campaign. There are times when you can do it. Absolutely. But you don't want to do it as a lore dump. No, You want exactly. to do it as a description. It's a description. It's a, it's a summary. It's not a It's not a whole diatribe that you go on, right? Like, Baldur's because... Gate 3 didn't launch with Barbarian. Of course not. Why would it? What the it's early what access. The Why would it have anything? What the <laughs> fuck? They only like I'm I'm just looking through my Steam wish list to see if anything's yeah. on sale and Baldur's Gate the new just. update. New class, Barbarian. Uh, just now. Right. What? Uh, it's been two fucking years. I Jesus. know. I, that's why I probably won't buy it for a long time. I'm not touching it until it's done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Apparently it's... it's still in Act One. Of course it is. Yeah, because they're milking it, dude. <sighs> anyway, go on. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. Um <laughs> shouldn't be a war. Uh dumb, war dumps, right. Yeah, it's just a brief description. It just gives you yeah. enough. Um, Honestly, the only time I can think of where I did an actual lore dump mm. is when you guys went into the Iron Tower and looked into information about the Underdark. Oh, yeah, yeah. And but Brogan got a crit. Yeah, that makes sense. That was because, the thing. <laughs> yeah, it's because we were looking for it specifically and we needed to know things. Absolutely. Yeah, you specifically asked about, like, the monsters and the yeah. environment and shit, and he got a crit. So it's like, well, here's all the information. Yeah, exactly. Because, <laughs> like, you found it, exactly. you know? Exactly. And a lot of times, if I have, like, effectively what I'll call them, it's it's the exact same thing in movies. It's an establishing shot. Yes. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's the most I will usually ever do. Yep. And it, it Like, just at gets the beginning of the campaign, I will give you background, mm -hmm. and then... 
in new locations, I will describe them. Mm -hmm. And depending on your role on perceptions or looking for information, mm -hmm. you know, differing amounts. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> purge thy tongue and tell me of the devil's nectar and drink from the teat of Garibé. Does that oh, also well. occur in his car? Doth not all of reality? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I hate how we've we started a cult to Garibay. I know, I God. know, but he tried to start it first, so we're just helping. <laughs> yeah, we're just helping. We're um, more successful than he was at starting a cult. Oh, for him. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Preambles yeah. as establishing shots are is a great way to view it. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. An establishing shot just to get you everything you need to know, and then the more information that you need is roles, basically, and like yes. actual questions the the players have. Yes. Um, but yeah. Perform nature or perception checks or hunt for food or tracks. Let NPCs mention the details of the weather or the local flora and fauna. Mm -hmm. That way, players are learning the information as it becomes relevant or as they ask for it. I'm not by any means saying don't describe your world. A little narrative when players enter a new space or meet a new oh, person can be very immersive. But these descriptions will have more punch and more sticking power if you don't overdo it. You can and should know details about your world that are not handed to your players on a silver platter. Ask yourself what information is need to know and what information will make them curious and want to learn more. They'll learn it and internalize it better if they are receiving it in pieces and in context. So yes. I would I would uh, amend that first part of that a little bit of like not need to know but what is obvious. Yes. What is obvious and then what would make them curious. I think that, yeah, that and is I, better. Yeah and I don't know if I would say need to know. I would say not need to know, but needs to be discovered. Exactly. You know? Yeah. That's why I say obvious, just so it's like, yeah. if anyone was to look into my room right now, what would they see? You know? Uh, they would obviously, you know, <laughs> see blank. Right, exactly. Like, they would see how But if they look in your drawer, then they need a therapist. Right, sure. exactly, yes. I can only assume. A hundred percent. And then they'd find, like, all your, like, blowguns and poison dart frog that's, venom that's and, right that's me <laughs> and like your giant potted ayahuasca plant yep yep i don't even know if it grows i, I think it does i don't know i, I don't know i have, no <laughs> I have cacti <laughs> oh nice yeah i tried I, have, I tried having cactus as they died yeah uh, one of them did die but i have uh i have a replacement for that one and the other ones are going strong so nice yeah. I had one and I like it bloomed once and I was like, oh man, what a gorgeous flower. Yeah. And then I never got it. I never got it again. Dude, my, my, um, one of mine grew a stalk Ooh. and the stalk had a flower on it, but it never opened and then oh. it died. And I was like, Damn. oh, but then, you know, it's still, it's doing better now. So maybe it'll, maybe it'll do it again. I'm hoping for it. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Um, this last one isn't going to be for everybody. Some DMs want complete control over their world, but I want to mention an option that I think is underutilized, and that is giving your players some power over the world building. This right. could take a lot there of different go. forms. Yes. One of the most common ways that DMs allow players to participate in world building is with their characters' hometowns. Oh so my god! My home games, the DM yeah. provided a general <laughs> outline of how an underground kingdom was laid out, but I was basically given complete control over the specific town that my character was from. I okay. ended up writing a whole little agricultural hamlet for her. It made me feel very connected to the character's hometown in a way that I haven't felt with other characters. Plus, when yeah. asked questions about this place in character, I feel equipped to answer them confidently and in depth. It's way easier to roleplay Penelope's familiarity with her home when I myself know it inside out. Letting players take part in the world building can help them feel more connected to and more knowledgeable about the world around them. Plus, getting more creative brains involved can give your world depth and variety that might be harder to achieve alone. If you haven't tried this mm. before, consider laying out your large scale stuff, but letting players do some select detailing in areas that are relevant to their characters. If you're worried about your players' creations fitting with your themes, you can always retain veto power over their inventions, mm -hmm. or even work together with them during there the creation go. process. Yes. Ultimately, you are the one who gets to decide what ends up on the final world map. S Building an entire world is nothing to sneeze at, and by no means can I give you all the information you need about how to world build in two YouTube videos. But hopefully this will help you avoid common pitfalls and refine your own world building. If you Okay. Yeah. 
Um, I'm always happy when they say stuff that I've already said. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Because that, yeah. was, that was pretty much what I said. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I'm happy. Um, yes. Yeah, 100% with that, that bit of world building. Um, even, like, there's also... Um, people co-dm stuff all the time as well like that's a yeah. thing that some people can do um i've not done it myself but it does sound fun and interesting and it sounds I feel difficult like, to me well i feel like having somebody to bounce off of and really like hammer things out with and like try to spot my like when i when i don't think about something or when i miss something else here you know like all that kind of stuff i feel like that would be helpful um mm -hmm. Sometimes it, it it really depends though uh, on how I'm feeling at the moment. Obviously, if I want to, you know, have somebody help me with that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. But like, I I think it could. I think it is another little option there. Um, hmm. if you can, if you can get that to happen. Yeah. Um. Uh, I've let my players make up and develop NPCs in their hub town, mostly hmm. so that I can threaten their shiny new friends with death from the big bad evil guy. Yeah. Oh Hell yeah. Yeah. Hundred yeah, percent. Always mm. use those uh, those threads that they give you. Yes. Always. <laughs> but yeah, uh, use, the, use the threads they hang to hand you to tie the noose with them. Exactly. Um, but yeah, good Jenny videos. Um, mm. I am still th those two bits of yeah. like small and large world building being mistakes. It's like no, 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 no. It's just, the mistake is just. You might not know, I guess, what your style is right off the bat, you know, yeah. of world building. And it takes experience and trying to get to it, like to get yes. to understand yourself even uh, in this <sighs> in this kind of uh, role. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it, and that goes along with the whole making mistakes thing. Like, yes. you, you can make mistakes and it'll be fine. Not yeah. to mention, it's such an in-depth, time-consuming and energy-consuming process that a lot of people never really try it. Yeah. Unless you have, like, a real, some sort of solid vision of mm -hmm. something in there. Because yeah. if you have at least something to build out from, whether it be a city or an event or uh, an interesting location or whatever, yep. you've got something to build out from. Mm -hmm. So... Like if you if you thought of a war where yeah. and this is taken straight from fourth edition, yep, imagine you had like a war between gods and uh, elementals and the spells they cast were so powerful they became sentient and destroyed both of them. Yeah, and now they like tore apart the world and it's like a fucking it was a wasteland for a long time, but. <laughs> Now, like thousands and thousands of years later, it's better. Imagine how that world would look. There'd be massive fissures and yeah. huge mountain ranges that are like up higher than the clouds and shit, you know? Yeah. You might have forests that are perpetually burning. Yeah. Or petrified forests or whatever. But anyway. Right, right, right. Yeah. You got to have somewhere to start. <laughs> yeah. Um. I even just a solid like just kicking the pants in the way of like um somebody wants you to run for them because they think that you'd be good at it, right yeah in that case like then you might have that inspiration to then go okay i can do this and even if it's just to run a module right like the module itself has its pre-built world but obviously and i've said this before you can add your own flair to it right like mm -hmm. and and build off it really um and it's it's fun um that's what i did with curse of strahd and that was the first one i run, ran like or not curse of strahd sorry expedition to castle ravenloft the 3.5 yes. edition um that's what i did with it i i used it as my basis and then i put little elements in it that i that i wanted to do and so i did and it was fun mm -hmm. it was a great time um and i made a whole forest into protozoa it was great Nice. <laughs> Dark powers. Woo. Um, this is this is Vermintide too. You ever hear? Uh, you ever read the story? If you give a mouse a cookie, well, this is the direct sequel. Mmm. <laughs> true. <laughs> That's um, funny. Anyway, go on. Yo, you're good. Uh, time for me to go. Thanks for the great stream as always. Well, thank you, Steely, for showing up and hanging out. Yes. Uh, hope. Uh, hope to, that you enjoyed and you catch the vibe. And hope later. you make it back Thursday if possible. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, so, midpoint, cool. Um, let's talk about that stuff that we talk about during the midpoint. Mm. That's called shilling. <laughs> yes. Um, so, if you didn't know, 
we have a Patreon. Whoa, mm -hmm. that's crazy. That um, it is uh, full of lovely folk mm -hmm. who have given us money to make dice for them to have. Um, who are for those lovely folk? Well, turns I'm out glad. it's all of the people in the stream. <laughs> I'm yes, I'm glad you asked. Those lovely folk going from top to bottom, from the highest tier to the lowest tier, but mm. in our hearts, all at the same tier. Hmm. Uh, not in our wallets. But no. <laughs> <laughs> but but that doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, I keep having to tell you guys. <laughs> um, that is, of course, starting from the top. Draco Kraken at tier four. Thank you so much. Mog Zero at tier four. Thank you as well. Slazer at tier four. Thank you very much. Steely at tier four. Thank you. And Drake Cross at tier three. Thank you so much. And Chris at tier two. Thank you. Uh, Lux at tier two. Thank you as well. Frozen Spaghetti at tier two. Thank you. And finally, last but not least, Kill Chrono at tier two. Thank you. Yes. Remind me how to donate on stream. Well, okay. Ben, if you want to donate, uh, you can type in exclamation point donate into our chat and the little bot will give you a link that you can go to and it'll show up on the stream and uh, you can donate through that. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to if you don't want to. I understand that you want to. Yep. Uh, so And... Even though we know you don't want to, and we know you don't have to, right, right. but if you donate a bunch, there's a thing that happens. We don't know what it is, though. That's true. Well, no, you do know. I said what it was. It's just you don't know what the, the amount is. Um, oh, okay. Uh, so the, if, if you donate yeah. some sort of amount, something it, happens. Yes. If you if you donate enough, the, it will go to text-to-speech, but it's, it's higher up there, and I will say I don't expect anyone to do it. So please don't fucking, if you don't have the money and if you, like, legitimately, please, oh my god, I understand. But, but uh, discovering the secret. No, I, but, I get that. That's part of the adventure. I will be 100% fucking <laughs> real with you. I only did it because that's what you're supposed to do in this whole thing of, like, making the money so that we can get the dice. I'm supposed yes. to give you that incentive uh -huh. so that you donate more so that we get closer <laughs> to the dice. But yes. I will say, if you do donate that much, I will cry. <laughs> because that's too much already. And now <laughs> <laughs> anyway, like I'll be a hundred percent real about it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so there's that. Hmm. Hundred percent is a hundred dollars. No, God, no, God, no. <laughs> if, if somebody donated a hundred dollars, I don't know what I would do. I really yeah, don't it's know. Not, what I it's would not. Do. This content is not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Just even if, I won't. If, even if, I won't do my scuzzy fucking <laughs> donate more money. I was thing. gonna. I was gonna say like if you really found yourself to that point, like I don't know what I would do. Like if you thought we were worth that much, Jesus Christ. Yeah, no. It's you this know? content is not worth that much. Um. Anyway, so uh, uh. Other than that, of course, you can uh go uh on to T Public. Get our logo on a shirt or whatever else T Public uh, has. Um, no fucking coasters. Fucking hell. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of other things. There's even masks and stuff and notebooks, yes. even if you want to start your own world building with our fucking faces on the cover looking back at you every oh, time. Sounds horrible. <laughs> um, and uh, other than that, we are, of course, partnered with Humble Bundle, uh, of which if you use the link in the description as well. Uh, yee, yee, Patreon won't no. accept my card, but I want to contribute what? to the dice fund. Did Thanks they do it? The backlog smile. Oh, oh. oh God. You're making me sick. <laughs> he did it. The absolute <laughs> mad lad. I assume. Ben, you Ben. <laughs> Ben, we're very disappointed in you. <laughs> ben, I swear to God. Are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> it's 101. I, no, it it's, 100, it's 100 fucking dollars. Jesus Christ, man. Uh, 
I, well, the text to speech worked. Uh, I might have talked over it a little bit. <laughs> what what did um, he say? God damn it. Uh, Patreon won't accept my card, but I want to contribute to the dice fund. Thanks for the backlog. Smiley okay. face. You're <laughs> well. You know that's fair. Oh a long backlog of of shit to watch. Yeah. Sometimes it is oh kind of hard God. to find that much content. That's to, true. Like do shit. That's true. But still, it wasn't worth that much. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Oh my God. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Jesus Very Christ. appreciated. Thank you. And I swear to God, if you did that because I was doing my, like, slimy, <laughs> give us more money bullshit, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, I just, I, 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 are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not, I, I'm not full on crying. I am tearing up a little bit. I'll be honest with you. I get emotional. Um, With money, yes. Well, just in general, when know, generosity <laughs> happens and just in, oh, what the fuck, dude? Yeah, it's Okay. Weird. Um, wow. It's going to take me a second. Um, yep. But that's about 12 Batman pizzas from Little Caesars. That's right. <laughs> that's right, Mug. That's right. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> like, man, that's like that's like 10 gallons of Gamer Girl bath water. That's right. That you could have got with that. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Holy fuck. Okay. Um,. Jesus Christ. Too bad Aiden wasn't here for that. I know, I know. We'll have to tell him. Oh yeah. my god. Um, I mean, he's probably awake right now. Let's see. I'll just I send don't know, him a man. message. When the snake oil man gets caught off guard. I'm not a snake oil salesman. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, oh, thank you. Yeah, we're get we're much closer now. Jesus Christ. Yep. Um So anyway, uh uh humble, if you buy through our link, you support yes. us. You get get good games, yes. and you support charity. Hundred, yes. a, a, a percentage of it goes towards Tabletop Alliance, uh, who's also got a link in our description so you can find out more about them. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, maybe spend your hundred dollars <laughs> on games and stuff next time. <laughs> I don't know. Warhammer, Total War Warhammer Three is coming. You can pre-order it through there. Um, <laughs> it's coming on the on Thursday, and I'm already fucking putting it in there. Um, <laughs> you pre oh, hey. Hypo Crate. Oh, Ola. So, hey. yeah, so he heard the fucking news. Who messages me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alejo and... still has tears streaming down his well, cheeks. No. <laughs> I, I am still getting over it. <laughs> well, well, no, he says in a way uh, that denotes yes. Um. <laughs> But yes, thank you for the hundred dollar donation. I like, I can't, I can't stick around. Um, yeah. I'm gonna, gonna have to go soon. But yeah, I can't yeah. thank but... you for the money. <laughs> <laughs> but, mm, the money. <laughs> and I, I, I was so grateful that I, I decided I to this. hop in here. Mm. So if uh, mm -mm, anyone else wants, no, I, <laughs> no. Like, I actually no. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, in, no. In, all, in all seriousness, thank you very much for the donation. It is yeah incredibly appreciated. That's crazy. Yes. That's fucking who, crazy. Who is who's the one that donated? That was that was a uh, con of seven in our Discord or Ben. Thank you very much. Jesus Christ! Yes. If uh, if if you're having trouble with with Patreon as well, like, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I I wish I could help you with that. Um, I but this you oh my god, <laughs> just I I just need to check our fund now. I need to know mm -hmm. where we're at. Um, I gotta remember the. I'm so flustered. I'm I can't remember the password. <laughs> uh oh my god, what is the fucking password? Help. <laughs> Uh, is it this one? I hope so. Yes, it was that one. Now I gotta go to the authentication code. Well, um, regardless, we were like, we were nearing a little, uh, over or a little under halfway, uh, to the, to the goal. So, um, mm -hmm. you, you, you've propelled us forward a little bit more. Thank yes. you so much. Christ. This. I, uh, ha, 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 all right, let me look. Uh, that plus, uh, yeah, okay. So we're there with that and with the current, uh, 
uh, stuff on Patreon. We are... Uh, I have to open that in another window so I don't show it to the fucking stream. <laughs> I don't want them to see all this information that we... Uh, um, okay. So this is... So we're... <laughs> we're over eight hundred dollars. I can tell you that much. Damn. Uh, uh, quick maths. Uh, that is eight hundred and fifty-three dollars and fifty uh eighty-nine cents. And how much is it to the uh fifteen? Okay. So that's over half now. Yes. Wow. Okay. Man. Jesus. Thank you. Again. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um and of course thank you to everybody else who's been doing the Patreon and and just the small donations and stuff. It's all all appreciated 110%, you mm -hmm. know, every time. Um it's just, you know, $100 is a staggering amount. And so yes. giving a bit of fanfare for it is kind of uh it, it deserved. Yeah, yes. um, well deserved. Like I I know when I like donated like fifty dollars to a streamer once and they're like, Oh cool, thanks and then just kinda of moved on like it, it kinda 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 fucking stung. Yeah, no, that's uh so when like someone donates a hundred dollars, I'm like, I will fucking be there. Yeah. I'm a GM, I don't have time for games. Well there you go, I guess. I guess. <laughs> um yeah so whew. anyway that's enough shilling i think <laughs> we, we did it um yeah i i unfortunately am like i said unable yeah, yeah. to stick around no worries but uh good luck with your world building thing also yeah. alejo might i get a link so that i may shill it oh sure sure yeah <laughs> Uh, it's right there. I need to get more people in here who I can understand. donate money. No, I hate that. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Thank you much. Yes. Uh, uh, and I will put it here. <laughs> Ooh, uh, put me in okay, shell shock, you though bitch. I shall not be. <laughs> <laughs> Or or shill shock. Mm, oh, shill shock. That's much better. Damn it. It is. It is. Damn yeah. it. Glad you were here All for right. that one at least. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you boys have a have a good one and yeah. uh, good luck. See yeah. Ya. See ya. See ya. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. There you go. All right. Well, let's move on to the second video. I'm prepared. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this one, <clears throat> this one is from uh, Tabletop Tavern Tips by Crispy's Tavern, colon, d d Tips and Stories. <laughs> um, it's I a long name. <laughs> it's a long, it's a long channel name, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it, you do whatever. I don't mm. care. It's fine. Um, <laughs> so, let me move over to this screen. Oh, that's Ginny still. Hold on, everyone. Don't worry. We'll go to this one. Okay. So, brought to us by that, uh, the whole long title. This is Four World Building Mistakes That You Should Probably Know About. Tabletop Tavern Tips. Uh, if it would load, um, that would be great. Uh, did hello? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh! I just had to hit play. Oh, that was weird. Okay. Yeah, that's what happened to me before too. Really? Is that a plague doctor rat? Yes, it is a plague doctor rat. <laughs> Never knew I needed that. There you go. All right. <laughs> so, here we go. Yes. World building. It's something I talk about a lot. In fact, almost every episode of my podcast has at Ooh. least some bits of it dedicated to talking about world building with other people because I think world building is a big part of Dungeons and Dragons. It's a big part of the mm -hmm. DM's job. Even when you're running a module, you still need to communicate the world to your players, even mm -hmm. if it's not your own world. 
Yes. World building is going to be part of your life as a dungeon master, whether you homebrew your own worlds or just use modules. So I think world building is one of the most important skills to learn. However, I do see a lot of mistakes made when world building, and that's not a bad thing. World building is hard. A lot of professional authors don't do it very well. True. A lot of the most famous series of all time have very janky world building at times. It happens. So let's Harry sort Potter out some of the most important mistakes for dungeon masters specifically. Without further ado, let's get started. That. Now let's start with. Damn it! I like wish he listed out the whole fucking title. I don't really think. <laughs> no, that's his whole channel name. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn it! <laughs> for mistakes for dungeon masters. Number one, having a derivative world, I don't think is a huge problem. Now, I don't yeah. think your world should be a direct ripoff. Don't directly reference events, and try not to take names from other things, even though. For me, at least, that's really difficult to do because mm -hmm. if I see a cool name in media, I'll probably steal it. Sure. But try not to be directly derivative. But at the same time, if you want to take inspiration, I find no issue with that. I now, don't think that taking inspiration say, is a big deal. Oh, yeah. I've got one thing to say about that. It mm -hmm. depends on the world you're running. If you're running a Star Wars game, yeah, you're kind of stuck in the Star Wars world. So you might have some of those names pop up. Right. You, know, I, I, you might, you might not, and you should not run into like Han Solo or Darth Vader, but right. you'll probably hear those names if you're yeah. playing in that time period, at least. Yeah, exactly. Like if it, it depends on setting, it depends on placement. Like, yeah, I feel like, um, especially for something like that, you would hear if it's after the, what happened in the movies. Yeah. Um, you would hear about fucking. All the rebels, Leia, yeah. fucking Luke, Khan, fucking yeah, because they were that. fucking like galactic heroes. Yeah, exactly. Like, why wouldn't they be known? Because they fucking did it. They did yeah, it exactly. Um, and people who were there are going to talk about how they did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so y you know, um, yeah. So you can say names from, you know, established yeah. works. It's just you shouldn't get involved with them, probably. Yeah, exactly. I, it, there's a there's a difference here of like referencing and not having direct contact. Yeah. Um because if you reference, that's fine. I don't I don't yeah. see any issue there because if something happened there, then whatever. Um, <laughs> it just makes me think of that uh Lord of the Rings game. I forget what it was. I know that you and Brogan Third played Age. it, I think. Third Age, is that the one yeah. where you were following the fellowship? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> where you literally follow behind them all the time. And, then, and you fight the Balrog after Gandalf breaks the bridge. Yeah. And you fucking fight the Eye of Sauron up on the tower. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's a horrible, horrible thing. That, um, <laughs> yeah, but it's so dumb. It, it was good for a while. Yeah, I, I imagine it. it was fun. It was a fun time. It was, it, but it was stupid as hell. <laughs> that, yeah, fighting the yeah, fighting the Eye was <laughs> fighting the just, Eye of Sauron. Uh, I, I don't understand what the fuck that was about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you think Tolkien wrote that? <laughs> yeah, he wrote it specifically for that game, actually. Yeah, he, he resurrected himself for the game. <laughs> you know how people say when someone spins in their grave, it's a bad yeah. thing? Turns out that when Tolkien was spinning in his grave from that game, <laughs> yeah. he was spinning to face upward so he can sit up and grab his pencil and paper. Exactly. Right exactly. <laughs> they fucking necromancied him. Yeah. Just to write the game. <laughs> God damn it. Anyway, go on. No <laughs> issue with that. I don't think that taking inspiration is a big deal. If you're just using a dark fantasy inspired by Game of Thrones, that doesn't mean you're ripping off Game of Thrones. If you have a large, overwhelming army led by a dark lord, that doesn't mean you're ripping off Lord of the Rings. It just means that you might be taking inspiration from Lord of the Rings. The other mistake I've talked about before, but you don't need to flesh out your entire world. A lot of people will say that you need to have fleshed out world elements and dynamics between factions and all this in order to have a D&D world, and I think that that's stupid because, quite frankly, most of the time your players are not going to be encountering those things. If you develop elements to your world in a distant land that your players are probably never going to visit, you're just wasting your time. Focus on where your players are. Your players are the focus. Build the world around them. Of course, create elements elements elsewhere if you find the inspiration and the time, but your focus should be the immediate vicinity around your players and the plot. Okay, so then it's not stupid if you have the inspiration only. Yeah. yeah like, come on. No, no, no. Yeah, don't, don't say yeah. it's stupid. 
If yeah, somebody wants stupid. to, if somebody wants to make that content of if they go across the fucking land and they go to this other continent, because fucking maybe they will, you know. Like, and here's the other thing, like <laughs> I have a thing that I want to do in my material world campaign. Yeah. But I built, I built my continent, continent one, and then I had a idea, an idea for this thing, yeah. and it was going to take place on an entirely separate continent, sure. still in my world. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, shit. It's not really in the area they'll be in. So, okay, I'll have there be a quest where they get teleported to that location. Sure. And then they get teleported back. Yeah. It's as simple uh, as that. Yeah. Could do it's that. really not hard, especially Absolutely. in D&D. &D. In other things, it can be a bit harder. Like maybe right. Cyberpunk, because that doesn't have teleportation. No. But, I mean, it's got cars and planes, yeah, which is basically you... just slow teleportation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, know? you can get somewhere uh, fast. Yeah. So, like, you know... It's not stupid. Yeah, exactly. I, I that's it's such a don't don't use stupid. Just yeah, like it's not helpful to anybody to say that it's stupid because yes. you're putting what off I... these people that have these ideas. And I know you said well, if you have the inspiration, you know, go for it. But even so, you like your audience is probably here for you and your opinion, and they want your opinion and they crave it and they go ah. I want to, you know, like, it's the way that it yeah. is. I, I, I understand YouTube, right? Like, it's yeah. a cult of personality in a way, um, which is why I try to fight against it as much as I can. Um, yes. But, like, it's just, you called it stupid, and I hope that your audience is at least going to say, well, it's not, it's not stupid. I don't, you said yeah. it's stupid, but it's not stupid. Um, what I would say is, I wouldn't say, I would never say that building anything in your world is stupid yeah i would say that if you build something that is specifically in an area that is not going to be visited by your players like definitively yeah then i would just say cut write it down that's great write it down and then just keep it to the side right. and then tweak it whenever you feel like it right you know, um, because if you like what i was saying before if you have a campaign that takes place entirely in let's just say one building Sure. You have a take campaign that takes place in one building. Then you come up with a story that takes place next door. Just have that for later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, I think he's meaning don't spend all of your energy, uh, in that in an area that may not matter, and that's fair. So my my whole thing is just his word usage at the moment. I'm I'm yes. going to get to his point of of focusing. Um, but the word usage just makes it so that it muddies the waters a bit. Right. Yes. Um. At least, and it kind of dissuades people from world world building. Yes. Further. Um. Yes. But I, whilst I agree that you should probably focus more on what your players are going to be around in the beginning, um, I also think that um we've talked about it. There are many different ways to world build. If you want to start the big picture and start going from outside in, then that's mm. totally fine as well. Right. Like you can focus on the big thing to then have effect the small thing of each of these places and towns and stuff right mm -hmm. just because you want to have this solid foundation of everything else around it doesn't mean that that's a bad thing or that that's a waste of your time it just is a lot more work right yeah. and it might not be as fulfilling because your players aren't going to see all this stuff potentially but I think having some self-fulfilling stuff like where you go I have this here and I know that it's here and I appreciate it I think yes. that's totally fine. I, I, like, and you should take pride in that. Um, yes. Because, like, why not? You know? Otherwise, and, like, if they never find it, why did you make it then? Is it because you just needed something there? No, you liked it. You made it. Right? Yeah. So, There's no reason to be ashamed or feel stupid for having made something that you was ha were happy to make. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, there was... um. There's another thing that happens with me specifically. Um, the way I've written, as of now, the way I've written my Call of Cthulhu campaign mm -hmm. is I have all the adventures that I want to do, except mm -hmm. for, like, the final several. Because yeah. um, I have to establish everything before them to get yes. to them. Um, but sometimes I don't really feel like writing for Adventure 3. Right. What if I, I feel like even though it's like way later in the campaign, I want to right now, I really feel like writing Adventure 17. Sure. Yeah. Or, or 16 or yeah. whichever one. Yeah. 
And sometimes you just have that block where it's like, mm -hmm. man, I've been writing this thing forever. I just want to write something different. I, I've been building this town for mm -hmm. the last week. I'm sick of it. I want to build this mountain range. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's 100 miles away. Mm -hmm. They can see it from the town. So if they can see it, maybe they'll want to go there. Who knows? But regardless, I want to build this now. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's as simple as that. It's a good way to avoid burnout, really. Yeah, that's true. Um, and so, and then I'll I'll take the other position of mm -hmm. um focusing more on the tiny, the tiny, the the things that will matter in the in the short term. Yes. Um, also perfectly fine. Yes. Just go for it. Get all that stuff. Get it all set. Um, have at least the outskirts of of this town or whatever the fuck your your players are in. Get that yeah. so that they can go in those directions and you have an idea of where mm -hmm. they're gonna go and all that kind of stuff. Like if that's how you want to do it, absolutely. Like there's yeah. nothing wrong with that either. Um, yeah. And again, I'm not I'm not trying to say that that anything that he said is wrong except for the usage of the words. Yes, right. there's nothing incorrect. Yes, here so far, it's just and it's I just the way it's said. I understand. I understand what he wants to convey is like, you know, you have you have time, you have effort, you might want to, you know, put it towards focus the, it. Yeah, focus it yeah. and make it as productive as you can, or just make it so that you don't like burn yourself out on stuff or all that kind of whatever it is. You know, yeah. it it could be. Um, uh, exacerbated because you're making stuff that they're never going to see. Um, in, in the immortal words of, uh, sneaky, uh, whoever. Right. You're stifling my creativity, Mr. DM man. <laughs> That's true. So, you know, be a creative. Little bit, a little bit. Yeah, it really Tell just Tell me depends. my creativity is stupid. Yeah, it really just depends on, on the person, right? And, like, yes. again, I get, I get the idea. I get what he's trying to say. But yeah. it's just the way that he said it. Yes. Um, ben says, world building for the sake of world building is fine. Fun, in fact. But it shouldn't get in the way of the game, either by eating up what should be prep time or but, uh, by saddling the, uh, the players with it. And I agree with that, too. That is also true. Yeah. So th this is the thing. The way the world building works is that there's a balancing act that you're doing, right? Yes. As long as you are prepped and ready for whatever the next thing is, you're good to do whatever the fuck else, right? Yeah. And if your process is working on something and then working on this thing and then working on something again and then working on this thing, right? Like going back and forth and, until you're done, like that's how you work. Yeah. It really yes. just depends on the person. Yeah, that's just that's just the whole thing about it. Everybody's mm -hmm. different with their world building. Yes. Anyway. So those are two things that I don't really think are mistakes that some people kind of do think are mistakes. Let's move on to actual mistakes that I see a lot. Wait, sorry. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh, that wait. puts everything in a different context. That wasn't a mistake. So wait, okay. So is he was he saying that people think that that's a mistake and he doesn't? I let's he listen to the entire yeah. I kind of have to go back and re-listen yeah. to that a little bit. <laughs> Number one, having a derivative world, I don't think is a huge problem. Now, I don't right. think okay, the world yeah. should be a direct ripoff. Don't directly reference events and try not to take names from other things. Even though, for me at least, okay. that's derivative really world difficult is the overarching because if point. I see a cool name in media, yeah. I'll probably steal it. But try not to be directly derivative. But at the same time, if you want to take inspiration, I find no issue with that. I don't think that taking inspiration is a big deal. If you're just using a dark fantasy inspired by Game of Thrones, that doesn't mean you're ripping off Game of Thrones. Right. If you have a large, overwhelming army led by a dark lord, that doesn't mean you're ripping off Lord of the Rings. It just means that you might be taking inspiration from Lord of the Rings. The other mistake I've talked about before, but you don't need to flesh out your entire world. A lot of people will say that you need to have fleshed out world elements and dynamics between factions and all this in order to have a D&D &D world. And I think that that's stupid because quite frankly, most of the time your players are not going to be encountering those things. Okay. If you develop elements to your world in a distant land that your players are probably never gonna visit, you're just wasting your time. Focus on where your players are. Yeah, your so okay, we were still focus. right to call them out for that. Yeah, I, I still think it's not a, like a, a correct thing yes. to call it stupid. It's just yes. he's saying that there the the issue that uh, other people are saying is to have everything like a big world already made for them, whilst yes. he thinks that it should you should just focus on the smaller stuff. 
Yeah, um, in that, yeah. Okay. Which so we is were, just okay, a, we're good. Yeah, yeah. It's just a conflict between his view and other people's view, um, yes. which I would say both are equally valid. <laughs> yes, pretty much. Build the world around them. Of course, create elements elsewhere if you find the inspiration and the time, but your focus should be the immediate vicinity around your players and the plot. So those are two things that I there don't really okay. think are mistakes yeah, okay. that some people kind of do Makes think are sense, mistakes. Though. Let's move on yes. to actual mistakes that I see a lot of world builders make. And for starters, people building a world without any sort of direction or intent. Okay. Now, this one I see a lot in Dungeons and Dragons, and it's a really easy one to fix. What I mean by without direction and without intent is basically you're creating a world with a bunch of splattered elements that you think should be included, but you don't really know how to include them. Okay. You're including new governments and new religions and ah. new organizations, new monsters, new factions, new races, but there's not really a purpose to them. They're not created with any specific intent in the plot. Now, I do think some superfluous elements can be included. Like, yeah. for example, my homebrew world has two moons. There's not really a purpose to that, my homebrew world has two moons. Maybe I'll use that in the future, but it's just a meaningless detail that I included. Two moons. Cool. That's it. There's no purpose to that. But if you're constantly doing that for every part of your world, and you're using up your time to create these superfluous governments, factions, etc., you're just wasting precious time when you do that. Remember, okay. D and D has a bit yeah, of a enough. time investment and a time limit. A DM needs to get the content for a session done before the session. So if you're wasting time creating superfluous elements that you don't need, again, it's just a waste. This does fall into that misconception of world building where you need to create all of these different elements even if they don't really have a purpose. Don't create super- Okay, so you're now conflating um, the original thought of having this big world for them to explore and that it should be a big world, but you should just make it big without any purpose, um, behind a lot of elements. You're, you're kind of assigning that, that to like being the cause of a lot of this, where it could be a cause to some of it. But I don't think that it is uh, a direct correlation. It could yeah. be, um, but uh, like, I, think I don't in know. General, it wouldn't be. Yeah, I, I in I general, think, anyway. I think, um, I think, like overall, I agree that if you are wasting quote unquote your time with uh, these things when you're not prepared for the next session, yeah. like that's a problem. But. If you have already done this and then you're kind of jotting down these ideas to work with them later um, in order to actually like build your world more, I don't think that's mm. too bad, though I guess it's specifically if it is you're just adding these things in just to have them. Yeah. That, that very much can be a problem because then like why are they there? What's yeah, the purpose? Because you know? The thing is, when he's when he's describing stuff like the moon and yeah. things like that, that doesn't really jump out to me as anything that would take any time. The thing right. that I get hung up on is the, or the thing that I think anybody would get hung up on, really, is factions and governments yes. and towns and other things like that. So if you're bringing in towns and governments and whole social structures right. into the world and they don't have a purpose and... And where I'm going to labor under the assumption here that, mm -hmm. like he said, um, you are coming up with this content, this kind of quote unquote meaningless content instead of the story content, yeah. then that is indeed a waste of time. Yeah. So you the, should write these things down and come up with like their purpose and their setting and however they are before you introduce them. And I, uh, yeah, before you introduce them, absolutely. But I also think that this takes on a different perspective from um, being more of a open world sandboxy kind of game mm -hmm. where you can have these ideas and these things that are out there and it yeah. really, really depends on if you're ready for them to go and find these things, right? Yeah. If you're starting out your sandbox and you have these people in your starting area, right, and mm -hmm. you want them to get through a bunch of starting things first and you, you're giving yourself the time so that you can mm -hmm. develop these kinds of other things to really, like, be a part of the world and try to make it make sense, then 
I guess, but you're you're kind of flying by the seat of your pants at that point a little bit and trying to make it so that they make sense retroactively um, yeah. in a way. Which, which would be very difficult. It's difficult. It's not impossible. Exactly. Yes. Um, Especially to... for a new DM, that would be extremely taxing, yes. I think. Yes, 100%. Um, so for a for a more linear kind of story um doing this at all doesn't really make sense to me but for a sandbox kind of story i can see how you could fall into this trap and kind of do it um and how difficult it could be to actually follow through with it Um, like okay if i wanted to do this if i wanted to do a sandbox game and i had this kind of inkling the thing that i would do is i would put you in the world and then i would have these organizations already prepped and ready yeah and they could go in multiple different directions based on your actions Mm -hmm. so that that way it's like you break out of the jail and because the jail you know there was a big jail break the fighters guild was established and depending on if you were peaceful neutral or evil they would have a different that fighters guild would have a very different disposition yeah Yeah. you know what i mean be like that yeah that that could very well be how you do it absolutely I um, hope that's how I hope that's how he means, but it doesn't sound like well, it. Well, so what I'm I'm thinking that he's just talking about how some people will just put things in there and just not yeah. like or which I it seems that's foreign weird. to me, um, because yeah. I, I guess it's just because we're experienced at this point and we we don't think like a a, a newer player would. Yeah, not like um, a this is kind of like theoretical. Yeah, world building. I I honestly, it's it's interesting because like I. I, I like to I like to think of this on this perspective because it's just like if a new player really was to do this, like why you know like yeah. I, well no I get why because they want to have all this stuff right yeah they want to have all this stuff and it's pretty cool to them and they want to get it to be this way and like mm-hmm. I understand that and like go for it if you can do it but for this kind of stuff I would say absolutely try to prep it out beforehand you need yes. to think about this. Um, mm-hmm. Because if you want to have multiple factions, you want to have multiple governments, you need to figure out how they work together or how they differ or if they're at war or if there's resources mm-hmm. they're going after that are similar, that they're like, you know, trying to trade even to get them or what kind of mm-hmm. political alliances there might be. You know, there's a lot here for you yeah. to go for. And if like if you just do like a single like a uh, continent and there's only a single government really that's like established you can have splintered mm. ones of like smaller ones that are under its rule but having mm. the central one being kind of the core where everything else is like a derivative of that then mm. that would work a lot like better and easier for somebody newer i think because then you only have one thing that you really have to think about whilst yes. the other ones you can then just go okay it this takes is how they feel about them and yeah exactly only, it know. is this is the rule um, are they a, a loyal, are they loyal to it or are they more susceptible to not being so, right? Yes. Are and they like, more, uh, they, subversive or whatever? Yes. That's a great word for it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. It's a very interesting take. Yeah. Uh, not a bad one, but interesting. No, no. Um, uh, Bramble says, another thing to note, something that can be created on a mere whim without a defined place in the world and then given a purpose after the fact. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, it, it just it just really, I think it's just the scope of this because if this is happening like he's saying and mm. um, the scope is very large, they're trying to add in a bunch of things at once, mm. mm-hmm. that's going to fucking be so more much more difficult than somebody going... I really have this interesting idea. I want to have trolls, right? Yeah. And no, then, that's that's easy. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's like easy to do, and like they might not know exactly how they're in there yet, but you can figure that out. You know, even as the game is going, really, mm-hmm. like that's totally fine. But yeah. it really just depends on the amount. I think. Yes. Um, uh, for me, that was the city of Rockview. Uh, when I first made it, uh, I simply wanted a city built on top of a delta. It was only okay. long after that I came up with why it was built on top atop a delta and its importance. Yeah, mm. it's fair enough. Yeah. Perfluous elements without intent. 
create things with a purpose in the campaign. Like for example, for my homebrew campaign, I created a whole new race. I created a homebrew race. Number one, I thought it would be fun. And number two, they served as both antagonists at the beginning of the campaign and also allies at the end of the campaign. They were a dynamic part of the world that allied with the party over the course of time. Their leader, the Sovereign, became an important NPC. They had stake in the plot. They had meaning. I had intent when I made them. I didn't just throw them in there for no reason. So, so I'm getting this really weird vibe now. Okay. Um, where this this feels like a linear campaign, and I understand yeah. like that's fine. That's totally yeah. fine. Mm-hmm. This works for that if you are going to have them going on a path, right? Um, yeah. But for someone like me, <laughs> um, I like to have the branching kind of thing of everything spreading out and my players are deciding what to do. Um, yeah. The campaign is made by the players, um, mm-hmm. as I've said before, and mm-hmm. like their intent and what they want to do. And I can have an overarching story, but I can build it off of what they are doing. Um, yes. And so the intent, I guess, of some things that I put in my world might be totally different from it being part of the quote unquote campaign. Yeah, see, that's where I that's the thing that kind of raised my eyebrow a bit yeah. was I didn't add it, you know, context to the campaign. Yes. It doesn't you don't need to add something in context to the campaign. It's in context to the world. The world, exactly. It doesn't ha- not everything has to be a part of the campaign. Right. Because we've, we've that's started. that's the player's job exactly is to be like, hey, these guys are kind of cool. Maybe they can help us, right? Like, and the then they players... yank them in, kicking and screaming. Exactly. They will they will make things part of the campaign because the campaign overall is what the players are doing. Yes. Like you have your story that's different. Mm-hmm. Your the story... story and the campaign are two totally different things. Exactly. Ironically, your story is in the campaign, yes. but it is not the campaign. Yes. And yeah, I set out to create the Von Wheel in the first place, not really for plot intent, but because I thought a homebrew race would be cool. I came up with the intent later. I actually think that that's fine. You can start out by just creating a new subclass. I just did that. I created a whole new gunslinger warlock subclass. Why did I do this? Well, I was playing Red Dead Redemption and I had the inspiration and I wanted to make a subclass, so I made it. I and I, we came up with the subclass reason. too. Yeah, we did <laughs> because yeah. we because I like space. Yeah, and that's... then the astral sorcerer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Later on, the plot reason, the stake that these gunslinging warlocks would have in the plot, that came later. Intent doesn't have to exist before you create something, okay, but good. make sure to have intent in the back of your mind while you're making a thing. If you don't think that this will factor in ever at all, maybe just put the idea on the back burner and hold off on fleshing it out until you figure out a proper reason to fully develop this new idea in your head. Just because an idea isn't developed doesn't mean it's gone or it's vanished or it has no more relevance or bearing. You can still use ideas later on. Why does this feel weirdly in conflict with what he said before? I'm I, not sure, but like, I get. I also get that. Like I, I can't pinpoint it right now because it just feels so strange to me that he said this as well. Yeah, I. Uh, I mm, okay. Because it's like because I think it, no, it was because it feels in conflict with the thing that he disagreed with. Yeah. So it's okay because he was saying earlier that he disagrees with people having every little detail thought out. And this time he's saying that it's okay to have this deal or okay. this uh, detail thought out, but put it on the back burner. If you can't think of a reason for it to be naturally implemented, okay. I think. Yeah. I, I think. think that's what he meant. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, well, that's as far we'll as we labor under that assumption. How about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just work off that. Okay. Yeah.
Another oh, common mistake for both DMs and writers, quite frankly, is world building without idea or without detail. Now, mm. idea is essentially the focus of the world. It's whatever your story is trying to revolve around. Like, for mm. example, the world of Panem in the Hunger Games essentially revolves around the Hunger Games. The Hunger Games are the okay. central, most important thing that happens in Panem. That's true. The whole world and the systems of the world basically revolve around the Hunger Games. The 12 districts are so that we can have a split in the competitors during the Hunger Games. The whole dystopian future is to establish the setting for the Hunger Games. The yeah. Hunger Games are the central focus of Panem. Meanwhile, detail gives context to the world that you have created. It's yeah. minor things that make the world make sense. Overall, for Dungeons & Dragons especially, I think that idea is way more important. Panem lacks a lot of details. It has the central idea of the Hunger Games, but a lot of the details needed to make the world make sense aren't really there. Like, how does the capital sustain itself and how does question. it prevent rebellion from districts? Especially since the districts are the ones that provide them their food and their military might. How has the military district not overthrown the capital yet? I don't know if that's actually discussed in the books or not. I, I have no idea. I know it, the, the movies didn't give me any of that context as far as I saw, so I don't know. I don't watch young adult movies or read young I adult books. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm more going off of what I've like gleaned like, from reviews heard? and stuff ah, and, and all that kind of such. But like nothing, no, this never came up um, in those, so I don't know if it was an issue. That's the thing. Oh, the last movie that I watched, I want to say, was... Uh, like, the last new movie was, like, Deadpool 2. <laughs> there you go. I still haven't seen that. Good movie. Yeah. Um, Got cable in it. <laughs> yeah, no, I saw. Um, yeah. uh, to that I will agree in some part. There are ideas I have in the back of my head that I will describe as still cooking. I describe hmm. as a such because it's not very flushed out, and I haven't devoted a lot of time to its development. Yes. That's fair. Like that's the thing. Th that's fine. I it just felt weird that he said it. I don't know. Yeah. It just... Yeah. It was it was weird wording, and it yeah. felt contradictory. It but did. it was. Yeah. Yeah. But... <clears throat> what does Pan Am contribute politically and financially? It is really nonsensical sometimes when you think about it, but. The Hunger Games is far from a god-awful example of world-building. Yes, it does lack some details, but the central idea is there, and since it revolves around that central idea very well, and the storytelling itself is very, very good, the Hunger Games, at least the books from what I've read, holds okay. up. That's not to say detail isn't important. Tolkien thrived on very important details mm -hmm. that made his world make sense. There's a reason mm -hmm. why Tolkien is regarded as the greatest world builder of all time or one of the greatest world builders of all time because he thrived on that detail and the details were important he also had a central focus for his world the adventure the one ring it had that focus and therefore tolkien was able to build these details around it and build up a really cool world for both the hobbit and the lord of the rings you do not need to have the detail of Tolkien. You just need no, the idea not. first. Build up that detail yes. later, especially for a D&D game. Like I said, you only have so much time and you should be focusing your time around that central idea. Mm. Important details can come later. Yes, that's so, that's exactly what I meant when I, well, okay, maybe not exactly what I meant, but it's what I was alluding to when I was talking about starting your world with one particular thing. Right, yeah. And then building out from it. Yeah, and it makes sense um, if that's how you if that's how you world build. Um, yeah. Again, this is not taking into account of like some other aspects, I guess. Um, yeah. But I, if if we're if we're talking specifically about this kind of like his um, way that he does it, then yeah, mm. sure. That, yeah. Th I'm glad it works for you and stuff, but. Um, sometimes some people are, are a little bit better with, you know, working with all of those, you know, small things and really coming, having them come together into the big idea, you know, mm -hmm. um, later on. Um, yeah. So I, whilst not wrong, um, it's just <laughs> less uh, correct. <laughs> yeah. It, it was <laughs> bring that back. Um, yeah. uh, but no, it, it's not even that it's less, it's just that it's, it's less, um, 
uh, inclusive, I guess. In a weird way, I don't want yeah, to say the word, it, but yes. Yeah, because it doesn't really factor in the people that do it a different way. Right, exactly. Of, yeah. Um, it, it's strange, but yeah. That yeah, is, no, that is the word to use, even though it feels like it shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, right? Not wrong, but less correct. Yeah. Yes, yes. It, it's weird. Connections. Okay, so finally, world building without connection. This is part of that details thing that I talked about just earlier. When you world build, you need to connect elements of your world. There's a reason why the MCU feels so cool to watch, because a lot of the elements of the MCU connect together, and that is really, really satisfying to see. And sometimes. it doesn't just apply to the Marvel Cinematic yeah, Universe, it applies <laughs> to any large world. Now, you don't need to go that crazy with it. The MCU has been going on for years and years and years, and there's a reason they can build up all those connections. But even just yeah, minor little things can make your party yeah. really, really happy. When they make those connections, it makes them feel really, really smart, and mm -hmm. therefore, it engages them more in your world. Making connections between guilds and between governments and kingdoms, it also just adds to the dynamic, almost realism of your fantasy world. Now, I use realism really loosely because realism isn't really what we're going for here. It's Dungeons and Dragons. But at the same time, making there's the your world favorite more believable... term. Wait, wait, sorry, what did you mean by that? <laughs> yeah, that... right. That's wait. your favorite thing when they're like, it's Dungeons and Dragons, doesn't have to be realistic. Right. <sighs> what do you. What do you mean, friend? Yeah. What do you mean that it like I assume that you don't mean that you can have realism because yeah. what if I want to have realism in my D and D game? Oh, then it yeah. doesn't become D and D is usually a response, and then it's like <laughs> yeah, right? No, I, it does. I, I will assume that that is not what you meant, though. I will take this as the best faith and say that you don't want to have overt like uh, or sorry, not constrictive uh, not realism. Yes, oh, we'll go with that. That works. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> every time hey man it's always around and i always got i mean uh, oh no i know <laughs> that's fine <laughs> it's just funny how often it pops up it's upsetting how often it pops up mm. same time making a world more believable by building connections it is good and healthy for whatever homebrew you're trying to build up a common mistake i see is building up all these elements even if you build them around your plot and not connecting them, not making them a fluid part of the story and sure. the world as a whole. It's a common mistake, but it's a big one and something that more people need to do. Matt Mercer does this really, really well. A lot mm -hmm. of elements of his world connect together and form this very fluid, very believable universe for mm -hmm. Exandria. I think that's part of the reason why his world building works so well in that show. So, um, obviously, having having things connect is very satisfying. Um, yes. I would say 100%. It can be very satisfying. Um, and it does help with this whole, like, everything, like, exists together. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, like, if you have, um, let's say if you have a fishing village, right? Yes. And then you have uh, nearby, underwater, you have a village of people who also uh, are in need of those kinds of fish in order to eat them to sustain themselves, right? Yes. How does that work, right? What's the connection here? Um, well, do... the connection is uh, the the ground. Oh, yes. So, you know, the ground that mm -hmm. the fishing village is on is also connected to the ground right. that the ocean people walk that, on. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Right, but uh, <laughs> I think obviously... honestly, just to be subversive, it would sometimes be fun to be like, no, they're completely unrelated. <laughs> well, <laughs> so in some cases it can be. That's the thing. But yeah. in some cases you need. In some most sort cases of... it doesn't work. <laughs> exactly, subversion for subversion's sake is not doesn't usually work. the way to go yeah. at all. Um, yeah, no. But um, but for this, it would be like, well, do they have some sort of alliance? Do they have they they only fish in certain areas to not mm -hmm. uh, take away from fish in the entire area, so that the uh, people underwater are um, are able to also live? Or are they yeah. doing this too much to, so that the people that are underwater are now getting ready to start attacking the people on the land because they're overfishing and they can't fucking eat enough and they're starting yeah. to die out, mm -hmm. right? Like, you, you can go in a few different directions, but obviously that is a connection that you can then have that then creates this story of conflict or some sort of harmony that yeah. is is really driving these things to coexist, right? 
um, or trying to not coexist. <laughs> um, but, you know, and like in um, towns, trade is is usually a, a good way to connect um, different towns. Um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I guess war is always a good way. Um, resources yeah. just in general. Um, yeah. It, it could be uh, uh, monuments to gods. Could be really anything that, that yeah. really makes it so that this place has a purpose to other places. Right? Yeah. It um, could be a part of a like a religious pilgrimage. Yeah, exactly. All right, that's all the points. But always remember that while I'm talking about this, this is stuff that should come after making the game fun. If you think that these world building elements can make your game more enjoyable for your players, include them. But if you don't think that it will make the game more fun, if you think it will bog it down, don't include them. But for the people who want to world build, try to use these tips to world build just a little bit better. All right, Mm -hmm. if you guys enjoyed this episode of Tabletop Tavern Tips, then please do leave a like. If you want to see more videos by me, then please do subscribe to Crispy's Tavern. I have a super special episode of... Is that why he's in the fire? I don't know. Because his name is Crispy? Maybe. If that's Friday what it is, I'm going to be very angry. I edit <laughs> to celebrate 50 episodes of RPG Horror Story, so I'm really excited for that. Uh, <laughs> if you want to leave your own nice. thoughts or tips, go down to the comments down below. In essence, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all next time. Okay. <sighs> yeah. Uh, I, so aside, from, better, aside from... Yeah. B- making it better in certain circumstances, I guess. Right? Yeah, very, like, very specific circumstances. I'd yeah. Say. I would say as a as a broad like it, you can take these things and use them in a broad sense as well, but it really feels a lot more restricted um, to a yeah. certain style, which I'm mm-hmm. fine with. If you are if you are um, if you are world building if that is with your this, style, yes, world building with this style, then absolutely it might help you. Might yes, I don't know. Might, um, but there there are some instances where it just it doesn't feel like it will help too much. And see, here's the other thing. Hmm. There, it, ever since, uh, man, it really was when Critical Role started that D and D started getting super popular again, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Yep. Ever since Critical Role popped up, this hobby has gotten insanely more popular. Yes. And so, there is something that you can do if you're willing to put yourself out there. Write your world, and write the the major beats of your world. And put them on a forum and just ask, oh, yeah. hey, how does this sound? Yeah. And yeah. then if you have any major problems, people, now some of them will probably be gigantic assholes because it's the internet. It's the internet. But the ones who are measured and intelligent will probably be like, hey, this is really cool, but this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. yeah. I would suggest blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Peer review. Yeah. It's... That is a perfectly fine way to do it as well. Yeah. I write my own worlds the way I write them because I feel confident in my ability to make them make sense and because I'm being and I because I am terrified of Alejo and Aiden burning them to the ground with <laughs> That's <right>. consistencies. So <laughs> That's fucking right, you better be. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know you're just I know your hand is just trembling above a torch and pitchfork <laughs> every time we start a game. <laughs> so I have, I've basically gotten to where I am with world building and writing through a trial by fire, a constant, <laughs> never ending <laughs> trial by fire. <laughs> Woo! So I'm a fireman. <laughs> not the right one. <laughs> nope, not the helpful one. Yep, uh, arsonist is what you're thinking. <laughs> yes, fireman. Uh, yes. <laughs> so if you don't feel confident in your world building. Throw it out there to people who th- who feel like they are. Yeah. Whether or not they give you good advice, here's another thing that can be very important. And it's going to sound really stupid until mm. it work until it happens to you. If you submit that thing to a forum and someone says that doesn't make any sense, you should do this. And then you say, "No. No, I want to keep it the way it is." That even though you feel differently from someone else, That has helped to solidify your opinion. There are so many times when I'm driving home from work and I'm like, man, I'm really hungry. I want to get some fast food. 
And then I'll be like, eh, I shouldn't spend the money. So I'll flip a coin and be like, okay, if it's heads, I'll, I'll get some food on the way home. If it's tails, I'll eat at home. Comes up tails. Fuck you. I want that Big Mac. And I'll go and do it anyway. <laughs> because it helps me find out what I actually really want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's I can really that. stupid and weird, but I promise it helps. <laughs> yeah, it very much can. Absolutely. Because then it's just like, ah, fuck this. Yeah, it really makes you figure out what you really want. Mm -hmm. And at yep. the end of the day, what you want in your world is what should be there. Yeah, and you can find a way to make it work. Yes, Absolutely. that's the thing. Because for all, for as much as we go on and on and on about D&D not being realistic and, you know, how it should be realistic in certain ways, you can absolutely just say, eh, it's magic. Yeah. Oh, there 100%. are times yeah. when you can say that. Yeah. I have a thing in my world where it's like that. Yeah. I really, really don't want to give it away yeah, because it's something fair. I'm very proud of. I mean, it's not really anything to be all that proud of, but I like it a lot, right, and right. I don't want to spoil it. That's fine. And it, the the explanation literally is, it's magic. Yeah, and that's fine. Seriously. Yeah. Now, it goes a little bit beyond it's magic, but in essence, it's magic. Right, exactly. So and like, do what, that, you, do what that, you want and try to make it make at least a teensy bit of sense, and then people will be like, okay, I'm, that, that's fine. Exactly, yeah. Um, world building by committee. Yes, in a way. Yes. Yeah. Um, I use that coin flip strat all the time. There you go. Okay. Brandon. I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> uh, and Ben says, I too will roll a die and do what I want anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've done that before. That's actually. why I fudge dice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall, I think we've had a very good discussion uh, yes, on this. in discourse. Uh, and hey, and, we got Aiden in for a little bit. We did, we did. Um, so you just had to pay him a hundred bucks. To yeah, it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the sacred D one. Yes, exactly. yes. Um, so, um, yeah, that'll that'll do it for us for tonight. Um, I took away from this that Boo is the victim as a DM. He lives in constant fear of fire and brimstone. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's what you should take away. Yeah. That's why I made a, de a devil campaign. So that's right. just always fire all the time to get used to it. That's right. <laughs> There's um, another Terraria update. Really? Now? Sharing the love. Terraria update news. Oh, weird. Okay. Oh, is it? Uh, no, it's a. What the fuck? That's <laughs> so know. weird. Uh, why are they doing that? But we have comment comments yeah. uh, on two weeks ago uh, our last episode so bringing those up uh, first up <clears throat> Unirico says mm. uh, on episode 96 congratulations on the anniversary guys here's to another year of great content thank you mm. um, as for the feeling uh, as for feeling nervous before DMing a session I've not DM'd yet getting close to finishing initial prep for a Fallout D 2D20 campaign oh cool uh, but honestly, I can see myself getting that once I do. Uh, once these things get started, I usually quickly feel comfortable and everything's fine. But boy, am I a fan of overthinking things and coming up with the worst pop possible si uh, bleh, worst possible outcomes. Fun times. Yes, yes I am also mm. that way. Once I get in the swing, I'm fine. But before yes. then, I'm a fucking wreck. Oh yeah, I thought <laughs> I, I honestly, I like even before this most recent devils and dice campaign yep. i was fucking nervous to get back into it but it oh, went yeah. really well yeah yeah it did uh and lastly we have lux uh also on that episode yes. uh this was a pretty straightforward topic the advice mostly all came down to not indulging excessively and not pushing yourself too hard i would agree with that concept overall as for feeling nervous before running a session, I would say whether that's good or bad depends on how severe it is. There's yeah. a certain degree of anxiety that just inherently comes from caring about something and wanting to do a good job. It's a good thing if you're actually motivated to create an experience your players will enjoy, as long as you're also able to have fun yourself. The thing you don't want is excessive anxiety, where you're legitimately afraid that you're going to fail and you would like to crawl into a hole and get out of running the game. Yes. Uh, if the anxiety is only minor and you don't feel like it's contributing to burnout, then you're fine and you don't really need to change anything about that scenario. You'd probably know if something was causing burnout. Uh, you would feel tired of it. As long as you're being honest with yourself 
if you don't feel like something is weighing you down, it's probably not secretly destroying you. Ugh, excuse me. Um, but for severe anxiety, of course, you can't just magically will yourself to calm down. In that case, you should try to ground yourself and refocus your perspective. If you're afraid that you're going to make a mistake, then, well, the fact is actually that you will make at least one mistake at any time you run a game. So you can rec reclassify that from a possibility to a certainty and try to accept it. Uh, the thing is, mistakes aren't what cause people to leave your game. Not if they're the kind of people you should concern yourself with, at least. Mm. Uh, people leave your game if you treat them unfairly, dismiss their concerns, or otherwise demonstrate that you don't care whether they're comfortable and having fun or not. Uh... I would agree that you should try to make a, the fewest mistakes possible because this does reflect on how much you actually care about quality, but you shouldn't expect to ever be mistaken free. Uh, another way of looking at it is that improvement as a GM is a scientific process. You become a better GM by developing better theories on how to run games. You develop better theories by experimentation, and experiments sometimes fail. If you never fail, you're not experimenting, which means you're not improving. In other words, if, you're, uh, if you only ever try the methods that you already know will work, you'll never learn anything. So get out there and get to failing, because finding the bad ideas is just as important as finding the good ones. Mm -hmm. Fear of failure does not actually help you improve. Yes. Well said. Mm -hmm. Well said. And what was the other one? Uh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. That's right. You That's do. from uh, American sniper Chris Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's not from him. I know. <laughs> it's from somebody less murdery. <laughs> um so yeah, uh good comments. Thank you both. Um and thank yes. you all of you out there for hanging out and watching. Yes. Um we hope you enjoyed and uh we'll give our final shouts to uh our patrons and then we'll yes. take our leave. So, that is of course uh, Draco Kraken, Mog Zero, Slazer, Steely, Drake Cross, Chris, Lux, Frozen Spaghetti, and Kill Chrono. <laughs> or your Garibay and never fail. That's true, mm. Mog. That's true. He does not fail. We know no. this for a fact. He's been yes. doing this since he was 12. How could he mm. fail? Yeah. Um, but yeah. Thank you, everybody. And again, thank you to Con of Seven or Ben uh, mm. for that $100 donation. Actually, I'm still I, floored. I, I figure, is he still here or no? Yeah, I think so. What do you want to be called, actually? Do you prefer Con of Seven or that's Ben, true. actually? That's yeah, a good do question. You, do, you, do you have a preference? Because or should I we call, call you, ben, you ben of Con? Yeah, ben of Con mm, <laughs> Seven. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, if you, if you uh, have a preference, let us know. Yes. Um, because uh, otherwise I will call you whatever I think at the moment because I mm. my brain is a mess of ideas and things. Yes. Um, and it needs to be shut down someday. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah. Um, so let us know about that. But otherwise, thank you, everybody. Either one. Con is my chosen internet persona. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Con it is. Con, 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 con. I will try. Um, but yes, thank you everybody again. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will see you next week for whatever the fuck we do next. Mm. And Easy possibly thing. Thursday if we play. Right, that's true. <laughs> Hashtag reboot Alejo. That's right. Shut oh, me down. Boy. Turn me back on. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> thank you. And yes. good night, everyone. Good night. Goodbye. Go away. I feel like we need like an anime ending. Mmm, that would be great, actually. Yeah. <laughs>